All right, welcome to Facebook Ads for Real Estate. I'm your course host, JR, and before you get started diving into the course, I just want to cover some ground rules really, really quickly. Uh, first and foremost, I am not a guru, nor do I want to be, nor do I pretend to be. I'm simply just a guy who figured out how to get some real estate clients and run some successful ads for them. So I don't, I'm not out here going for fame and all this kind of stuff. I simply just want to show you how to do what I've done and be successful at it as well. So before you run any Facebook ad campaigns uh, for real realtors, you want to make sure that you check your local real estate laws um, before you do anything. One of the big, big things is uh, when you're running an ad from a uh, campaign, um, there's certain laws about branding and page branding, especially if you're if you're running it from a page that's not the realtor's page. You're going to want to make sure what you have to do to get around the branding requirements in that state or in that area. So make sure that you check on that before running a campaign just for safety. So remember, this is not a get rich quick course whatsoever. It requires work. However, you have a whole community to guide you along the way as much as we can and make sure that you succeed. So please post all questions in the group for the quickest response. If you try to message me, I get a lot of uh, messages and inquiries every single day. So uh, if you want a quick response, the group is where you should post your questions because there's other students doing it that can help you out as well. So why real estate? Uh, first and foremost, it's an easy niche to get results for. Once you know the campaigns and how to run them, um, you can just run the same campaigns all the time that you've already tested and, and tried. Um, and number two, it's, it's extremely scalable. Like I just said, uh, once you have one agent, it's the same process for uh, all your other agents and brokers. So it's not uh, something that requires a lot of time after you have the campaigns up. Um, I, As you guys will find out later in the course, I talk to my clients maybe once a month and we communicate uh, one time a week per client. So they're also extremely passionate about our product, which is leads and lead generation. So if you talk to any agent or broker, um, maybe not broker because they're a little bit uh, more keen to this, but if you talk to any agent, their number one problem is going to be leads. Um, now, whether it really is or isn't leads is is questionable. Um, it could be their sales ability, their follow-up, all kinds of things. But they're going to think that, uh, at least in my experience, most of the time, the people that we deal with, they think that they're awesome at everything else. They just need leads. And that's where we come in. So I've tested various offers in this course that already work. So resist the temptation to change things up or do it your way. You paid for this course for a reason, guys. So to fast track your success, stick to the system, stick to the script, st stick to the method um, because they work. So now I want you to go into the group, request access, uh, click the link under this video, request access. And once you're in the group, I want you to post an introduction and tell everybody why you joined Facebook ads for real estate. So this is the first step in following the system that I have laid out for you. So go in there, uh, post your intro and tell everybody a little bit about yourself and why you joined. Which you leave uh, allows you not to say that you're using an affiliate link. Now. You Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you the exact campaign to run for buyer leads. So first, let's talk a little bit about the psychology of what this ad is going to be. So this is the landing page that I'm going to uh, show you how to make right now. Um, it says, welcome to Virginia Beach homes list under $257,000. So $257,000, number one, is the median home price um, in that area. And secondly... Uh, the only person in the world that would want a list of homes under $257,000 um, is somebody who's in the market to buy a home. That's the only person, and that's why this ad works so well. So we're going to go to ClickFunnels. Uh, you, you, you just, you're going to want to take the share funnel that I gave you uh, under this video. You're going to want to click that, and it's going to import it to your ClickFunnels account. So you're going to want to hit edit page 
once this opens up so let's say I'm, I'm making this ad for uh, someone in Allentown Pennsylvania so Allentown's in the Lehigh Valley you can go city or county depending how big the area is so welcome to Lehigh Valley homes under two hundred fifty seven thousand dollars list the median home price in that area is actually a hundred and forty thousand um, dollars all you gotta do is either google it and do a little bit of research or uh, ask your client so I'd probably go with asking your client because they might have a little bit more accurate data so in the Lehigh Valley in Allentown the area that we're targeting the median home price is hundred and forty thousand dollars so we're gonna set this a little bit higher than that so let's go hundred and forty five thousand dollars and then we're also gonna switch this to hundred and forty five thousand dollars and you're gonna wanna switch the picture the background photo to a home in that price range as well so this is the one I got make sure again that the picture is not just from Zillow or Google or something like that make sure it's actually you know a home that they have it actually helps because if people are interested in the home on the ad then they they can actually go and and show them and try to sell them that home so as soon as you're done with that you're gonna hit save and you're gonna what you're gonna want to do is go to the next page in the funnel and you're gonna to want to hit edit so once they hit once they click the button the get me my list button they're gonna be taken to they're gonna get a pop-up where they can you know hit enter their name and email once they enter their name and email they're then taken to this page so the goal of this page is to try to collect the rest of their their information and this information right here will pre-fill from the previous page so you want to collect their phone number their address and then ask them if they would be interested in a free report on how to raise the value of their home before selling we're trying to weed out the sellers here so one of the questions I get is what do you do if they get to this page and then they leave so by submitting their information on the previous page we now already have a way to get in contact with them which I'll show you uh, later on in the in the videos but right now I just want to focus on the landing page so once this is uh, you want to customize this and use the same exact image that you're using on the, in the on the beginning of the landing page and once you do that and switch this to whatever area you're in you're now done with this um, the thank you page is standard uh, you can customize the thank you page a little bit it doesn't really matter um, but I'm not gonna bother with any of that so this is really all there is to it when you're building the landing page so once they enter their information it's gonna come here under contacts and you can then forward it from here to your client or set up a a, um, a forwarding system with within click funnels or you can use I use active campaign to forward leads there's a, a few different ways and I might make a video in the future on forwarding leads so you don't have to manually sit here and send leads to your clients because that can get a little bit tedious so that's pretty much it as far as the landing page is concerned now let's take a look at the ad in the next video and then I will show you show you the follow-up so once our landing page is in order we're gonna go over to Facebook we're gonna go to the Facebook page that you should be an admin of and we're gonna create this post on the page. So attention Lehigh Valley, do you know anyone looking to buy a home? Follow here. We've compiled a free report of homes under the median home price, which in this case is going to be a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Some of these homes may even qualify for special financing programs. Follow here, thanks, and put the realtor or the broker's name, it doesn't really matter whose name you use and then you're gonna upload the three pictures that we got from our, our agent and we're gonna publish those so once it's all said and done it's gonna look like this so you want the main picture to be the same picture as you have on your landing page so once our ad squared away we're gonna go back here to the Facebook home page we're gonna go to manage ads once we're on our dashboard we're gonna go down here to power editor make sure that you're in Google Chrome 
So we're gonna go to Power Editor. I already have this pre-made, um, but you're gonna go to, to Create Campaign, and for the action, you're gonna set Post. For the campaign objective, we're, we're gonna set Post Engagement. You can name it whatever you want, and all this stuff you can set whatever you want. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna make something like this. So you click on that, you go to Edit, Let this load up here for a second. Our daily budget is going to be ten dollars a day. Then we're going to go down here to our enter our city. So whatever city you want, you enter it here, and then you set the radius to. I usually go with about ten or fifteen miles, depending on the area that 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 particular client covers. Then uh, you know you're going to leave this. So you're going to leave this uh, as as uh, twenty six. You're going to change this to twenty six to sixty five plus. You're gonna to go to set all for gender, and then the detailed targeting. Um, you're gonna, it's gonna include people who match at least one of the following: likely to move, first-time home buyer, homeowners, renters, first sale by owner, home, luxury real estate property, property investment, real estate broker, real estate development, school, Trulia, Zillow, mortgage loans, family, and then you're gonna go down here, and there's gonna be a button to exclude, and then you're gonna click it and and exclude any title that that is related to being a real estate broker real estate agent or a licensed real estate agent so you do that by typing in real estate uh, agent or broker whatever here and you're gonna go down and you're gonna find all the job titles so real estate agent and brokers one real estate sales agent is another and you're gonna import those in here so that you know our competition isn't going to see our ad then you're going to go down here to placement and this is what your placement should look like you're going to go it's, it's going to be on automatic you're going to switch it to edit and then you go down here and you you turn all these off so instagram right column we don't want any of that all we want is news feed ad because you only want people to see this in their news feed because it performs the best so you're not going to touch any of this stuff once you have this in play then you go down here to this where it says ads and you edit the ad and this is where you actually where we're gonna build out the actual ad so you want to choose the page go down to find your your page uh, so Lehigh Valley real estate is the one we're using now and we're gonna select a post and we're gonna pick the post that we just created so there it is then you're gonna go down here click uh, track all conversions from my Facebook pixel um, I'll show you how to set this up in a later video but for now that's all you need to know and our ad will be imported in there with our images that we just created so we're gonna hit review changes and we're gonna hit continue and our ad is gonna then be live at this point so congratulations you've just uh, found out how to run a winning real estate ad start to finish okay guys so here it is the coveted seller lead campaign that everyone wants that every agent wants because um, of how well they can leverage their time with seller leads versus with with buyer leads so for example when an agent has a seller or has a listing they can just put that listing out there and then it's the job of the buyers agents to find and show the house so they can leverage their time a lot easier if they're if they're listing homes versus if they're doing showings and and open houses and all this other stuff so this, they can a single agent can have 10 listings and then the buyers agents are doing all the work of getting them sold whereas um, you know if they're working with 10 people to buy individual houses that's gonna take up a lot more of their time so this is there's a few things to note with this you're gonna want to split test a few things because um, I've just tested a lot and I've, I've tested the crap out of this campaign and different things seem to work differently in certain markets so first thing you're gonna to want to test is running it from an unbranded page versus a um, realtor page um, I found that it works it works well with either but you're gonna have different results based on what market you're in so very simple ad attention Lehigh Valley know someone looking to sell a home click here we've compiled a free cheat sheet called seven simple hacks to increasing the value of your home before selling this is a huge um, pain point or desire per se of people thinking about selling their home like they want to get top dollar so this is kind of playing on that desire I do image carousel 
and I just do a, a nice picture of a house on the outside, nice picture of like some some floors or a living room, and then a nice picture of the kitchen. You can play around with the images. Uh, I just always make sure that they're they're nice quality images. So call to action is going to be download because they're um, you know they're downloading this cheat sheet. So once you click over to the landing page, uh, this is what it looks like. So free cheat sheet, seven simple hacks to increase in the value of your home. Again, it's a picture of a nice uh, kitchen. If you put in your email, so I only ask for email, and I've split tested this like to death. I've tried to get name, email, and phone number on one opt-in form, and for some reason, people just don't want to do that. But when you ask for um, email first, and then you say who should we send the, sheet, the cheat sheet to and then ask for name and phone number for some reason people are more inclined to give it then it's it's like the foot in the door effect um, you get the foot in the door with the email and then you go in and ask for the name and phone number and I found that uh, well over 70% um, sometimes more give all their information so we have two different follow-up methods for when they do versus when they don't give their information and that'll be in the script vault section so once you put in your information here, um, it's just going to take you to a super, super basic um, thank you page. And it just says, thank you, uh, you know, check your email for your cheat sheet. You can add your agent information. You can add stuff in here for them to share the, uh, the ad and different things like that. You can get creative, but for the sake of showing you guys, um, I just kind of kept it simple. So now I'm going to show you guys the targeting for this because this is another uh, thing that you're gonna want to split test so I do homeowners just homeowners and then I do another ad set that's married um, I start off running them both at five dollars and I run this for link clicks so you're gonna want to run this for link clicks until you get about 50 conversions uh, 50 leads then you're gonna want to switch it to a website conversion so you're, you're taking your pixel you're teaching Facebook what kind of person um, likes to opt into this sort of thing and that way they'll start showing it more and more to those kind of people so I just do um, the city and a 20 mile radius so in this case I, I did Lehigh Valley because it's that's like the old the whole area it covers pretty much 20 miles within Allentown Pennsylvania 26 to 65 um, men and women this is another thing that you can split test is uh, men versus women I found historically women perform better um, because it is a, like a, a you know a home related home improvement type of thing um, so for detailed targeting you're gonna do behaviors residential profiles and length of residence if you just type in a uh, length length of can't spell today length of uh, residence it'll give you the options so you're gonna do three to five years but you're also gonna do six years plus um, I found that it works well without this, but I got better results when I include the length of residence. Um, yet another thing that I split tested with this, but you're going to want to stay uh, length of residence three years plus, and then must also match one of the following and then do homeowners. So you're going to do the same exact thing for the married ad, ad set. Um, let me see if I'll, I'll just show you guys. Um, you're going to want to do the same exact thing for the married ad set but just replace um, homeowners with married. So split test these two ad sets, um, very simple, and then find the one that works the best and run with that one. So uh, now that we have the landing page, the target, and the ad down packed, I'm gonna show you guys about the lead magnet that I referenced to earlier. So I've had this uh, super wicked uh, lead magnet designed for you guys. You guys are all free to use this um, as long as you have my course. Um, please don't share this outside of the course, but it's uh, seven simple hacks to increase the value of your home before selling. And then I put in, I researched and found a bunch of different things and I took the ones that I, I found uh, on average increase the value of the home the most. Because the thing is we really want to give value with this cheat sheet because it's going to place your agent um, client or yourself on a pedestal to these different leads if you actually help them so I just went through all these different things and then at the end I put a section for your agent um, and a, a call to action at the top so this is where your agents information can go um, their phone number and all that all that good stuff so this will be 
uh, posted under this lesson. Feel free to use it, customize it as you see fit, and have fun with it, and go out there and get some, some awesome results and post about it in the group. Okay, everyone. So in this lesson, we're going to learn about open house Facebook ads. So your number one goal when you are having a Facebook ad for an open house is to get as many qualified buyers through the door as possible. Before we go through the ad, I want to show you the results that we actually got with this exact ad set. So first and foremost, the open house was Hacked. There was a hundred plus groups that attended the event. So imagine some people came with three people, some people came with an entire family. So the open house was like wall to wall people. So it was it was pretty insane, and it turned into a buyer frenzy, which then turned into a bidding war. And one buyer actually came in with a pre-written contract in hand that they had gotten from their realtor. They were working with another realtor. That real realtor actually wrote a contract so that they knew that they were actually going to buy the house before they got there, which was also pretty crazy. And then there was three more buyers that actually submitted offers immediately after the event as well. So all in all, the house sold in four days, $25,000 over asking price. And again, this is because everybody was bidding against each other. And this was pretty much a crowd mentality. It was just a, a crowd frenzy. So I'm going to show you how to do the exact same three. So there was three types of Facebook ad sets that I did in this one campaign. So the first one I targeted sellers. The next one I targeted buyers. And then I just did like a quick little retargeting campaign to remind people to actually attend the event. I didn't spend much on retargeting. It was just like pennies here and there. So most of it was for the buyers. And then the, I would say 80% was for the buyers and then 20% was spent on the sellers. So here's a copy of the ad that we did for the buyers looking for a new home. This beauty is coming on the market soon in the highly desired community of Creekside, Ontario. It won't last long. So see it first at our private sip and see event. You're invited to sip champagne and come see this home with us. Call or text me to get your invite, the phone number. And then it says, or tell a friend smiley face. And here's a copy of the seller portion of the ad. So I use the exact same video as I did in the buyer portion. And so basically all it says is, hi, Ontario. We just listed your neighbor's home. Curious to know how much we listed it for. Click below to get all the listing details and get an exclusive invite to be the first in line to see it at our private sip and see champagne event. P.S. If you'd like to know how much your own home is worth, call or text me anytime. And then I drop the phone number. Now, quick thing to note about this whole ad is um, the sellers, the reason why you target sellers for an open house is because you're trying to see if there's any more, you can get any more listings in that local area, right? So essentially what happened here is she actually did pick up a listing in the area from this camp, this open house campaign. And what happens is sellers in the area will see this open house and realize that you know what you're doing when it comes to Facebook ads and they want to work with a realtor that knows what they're doing with Facebook ads. So they see this pop up in their newsfeed and they think to themselves, okay, I want to to hire someone who knows how to get as much reach as possible to my house, to my open house, to my listing. So this is someone who I want to give a listing presentation to. So that's exactly what happened. She went in there, she rocked it, and she got a second listing in this uh, community. So essentially what I would do is make sure that you are targeting sellers, not just buyers for an open house, because the sellers actually will become listings, hopefully, when they see the ad. Now, a couple things to note here before we get into it. So the house was priced right. It was also staged very, very well. The invite was to a sip and see event. There was champagne. There was a step and see board. That's the kind of board that you see like a, on the red carpet, like at the Oscars with all the advertisements behind you. And then people take photos of you. There was also appetizers. I never gave the exact location. So attendees had to call her to attend the event. And she basically captured every single one of those leads. And 
she also pre like the the only the pre-qualified buyers were allowed to actually attend the event and then if the buyer was not pre-qualified then she had to refer them over to her lender so if you team up with the lender the lender can actually pay for the ad and for the food and so all of the marketing for the event can actually be 100 percent free it's actually really really common for realtors to team up with their favorite lender and they'll either split the cost or have the lender split the cost because the lender wants buyers as well because they want to pre qualify all those buyers and get that business also. So total budget for this ad was $100. I spent $79 total. Um, so we didn't spend the whole $100 and the house was sold in four days. So that was like one of the best 79 bucks that she'd ever spent. So I ran the ad as a post engagement campaign and I'll explain exactly what that means. And I did one ad set for the event, which was for the buyers. And then I did one ad set for the sellers. And then again, one small ad set for the retargeting. And the other thing that I want to mention is that she did her part. So she followed up on every single lead that I sent her with like a shark. So people were texting her. They were calling her from the ad. She followed up with every single one of them. And again, she only invited the pre-qualified ones to the open house. Some of them did show up with their real estate agents, which was fine because she wanted to sell the house anyway. So um, she did that too. And then she also made sure that she door knocked to the area. There was a lot, a lot of signage out front as well. And she did circle prospecting. She called. So, I mean, she really, really put in a lot of work. And so the Facebook ads definitely supplemented everything that she was doing. So just make sure that your realtors also, um, you know, the person that you're, that you're working with, or if you're running this ad for yourself, that you are really, really doing your part as well, because the ads are only going to be as good as the person who follows up with the leads and, you know, invites them to the, to the event, especially because in this ad, we never told them the location. So you're, you have to follow up with every single one of the leads to invite them to the sip and see event. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to actually make the ad from start to finish. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go into your power editor. If you're not already in power editor, you have to go to where it says like the Facebook ads manager, and then there should be some three dots up here, and then you'll see either power editor here, or you go to all tools, and then you'll see power editor right here. So either way, however you get there, just go ahead and go to power editor. And then you're going to click, click create campaign. When you create the campaign, um, I like to use the guided creation because it's just a little bit easier for me. That's the old school way and I'm just used to it. So that's what I like to use. So you're going to run it for engagement. And so you'll click engagement. Um, for some of you guys, it may still say boost post. Um, so just so you know, it may be a little bit different on your end. So run it by engagement. And then um, let's just put it doesn't really matter like open house and then you'll do um there may be some options down here for you so just make sure it's on post engagement if you don't if you do see these options click continue so let's just say you did um one two three main street and let's see Okay, great. One, two, three, Main Street, Los Angeles. <laughs> Perfect. So what you're going to want to do here is for the locations, make sure that you have um, everybody who lives in this location is probably the one that I would choose. And then you can do a radius just like this. You can also exclude by radius, by zip code or city or whatever you want here. But what I would usually do is like, I'll scroll down, I'm scrolling here for you. So like for instance, in Los Angeles, you're going to want to keep in mind um, freeways. So is it easily accessible by freeway? So pick the areas and the cities that are easily accessible by freeway. You also want to pick similar demographics. So if you're advertising a luxury listing, you're probably not going to want to advertise in an area where the, the price is pretty low. Advertise to similar geographies with similar ge geographics, and then also make sure that you're doing easily accessible by freeway or train, depending upon your market. Okay. So there's that. So um, for age, depending upon your age, um, in Southern California, it's really, really expensive here. So basically, you probably want to bump this up to at least 30 years old. In your market, it may be a little bit different. 
Um, languages, another thing. In Southern California, Spanish is highly spoken out here. If you don't speak Spanish, you're probably going to want to target by English. So you can just do English all vice versa. You can do the same thing for Spanish if you only speak Spanish or you like to deal with um, Spanish speaking individuals and you speak Spanish. So that's an option or any other language for that matter. And then now when it comes to the detail targeting, so what you want to do here is you want to pick everything that has to do with a um, someone that's in the market to buy a home, right? So let's do um, likely to move. We're going to do um, first time home buyer. We're going to do renter, um, house hunting, and I also like to do Zillow, Realtor.com, Trulia, and Redfin. And the reason why I do that is because the only people that would ever be interested in Realtor.com, Redfin, Trulia, and Zillow are people who are looking to buy or sell at some point soon. And then after you've bought or sold, you probably don't go back to Redfin or Zillow or Trulia anymore. So um, I just like to, to make those ones in there. So you also want to exclude real estate agents. So keep this in mind. If you are a advertising an open house, you may want other real estate agents to see your ads. But in this case, I really don't want people to see the ad and then just copy her funnel. So I actually wanted to exclude real estate agents. So the best way to exclude real estate agents is, um, there's several ways because realtors don't always, they, sometimes they get creative with their job title. So you want to do a uh, realtor for sure. So we'll do that one. And then we're going to do real estate agent. So there's that. You also want to do real estate broker. Uh, job title, agent broker. And then you also can exclude by all the big, big ones. So Keller Williams. So employer, Keller Williams Realty. We're going to do Remax. Oops, Remax. So we're going to exclude by employer for Remax. And then the list goes on and on. You know, Prudential, Century 21, etc. You, I also exclude by interest. So um, Inman News. And the reason why I do this is because only a realtor would ever like Inman News. Um, so this is another reason why I put that in there just to kind of get everybody else out who hasn't identified themselves as a real estate agent by job title or by their employer. Okay. So the next thing is we're going to edit the placements. So I am going to uncheck Instagram and then I'm also going to uncheck the right hand column, which just leaves us with the desktop and uh, mobile news feeds. Then the other thing is you're going to want to switch from daily budget to lifetime budget. And I'll explain why in just a second. So if you have been given a hundred bucks to play with, you're probably going to want to do $80 on the buyer side and then um, end this at the time that the open house ends. So if the open house ends at four, then just go ahead and end this at four o'clock. Okay. Now the reason why I do the lifetime budget is because it unlocks certain things as far as the ad scheduling. So when it says run ads all the time, if you click on more options, you now have an option to run it on a schedule. If you don't, if you do a daily budget, you do not have time to run it. You can't run it on, on a schedule. So the reason why you run it on a schedule is because the ad says call or text and you don't want to get calls and texts at, at weird hours. So what I would do is I would do this from eight o'clock all the way to 9 p.m. so that you don't get calls again at weird times. So hopping back up here, Let's go to daily unique reach. It The reason why I do this is, um, let me show you here. So if I go to post engagement, it gives us between 220 to 570. But if I bump this up to daily unique reach, it actually goes up way higher to 1300 to 3400 people on Facebook. So granted, they're only going to see it once per day. But if you're in the market to move, that's all it's going to take, really. So 
Um, that's why I actually did, did it this way. If I was advertising a different type of business, I probably would never use that. But for, um, buyers, like when they're actively looking to buy, they'll see it once and they'll take action. So that's why I do it that way. And then that is pretty much it. I'm just going to go through this real quick and see if there's anything else here that I missed. So yeah, um, that's it. The only other thing is that I would name this something like um, buyer, something like that. Page and post. Um, I just did a slideshow. So create new ad. And then that's when all these options come up here. So click on slideshow. And then you'll go to create slideshow. And this is something to note. Okay. So on my personal account, I have the old slideshow. However, the client that I showed you, she has the new one. So my account has not been ruled out yet for the new slideshow features. I'm assuming Facebook is coming out with this, you know, account by account. So if you see something that looks like this, this means that you still have the old one, which is fine. You'll just upload your photos and then drop them in here. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, but you'll just like pick your photos and then um, you can go to like um, two seconds, you can do a, tr a faded uh, transitions, you can add music. And then once you're done, you'll just click create slideshow down here. The one that I showed you is way cooler, which is why I use that one. But unfortunately, Facebook doesn't give me the option to to do the, those types of slideshows yet. So um, then you would just put your text right down here. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Now let's go back real quick and I want to show you what the seller side would look like so that you have an, um, a clear view. So you would set up everything the exact same way. The only difference is the targeting. So what I do is I would do people who live within a one mile radius of the house. Okay. One mile radius. And make sure you're on you're still on people who live in this location. When you scroll down, um, the age or anything like that doesn't really matter. Okay, so not homeowner interest, you're gonna want homeowner demographics. And then the next thing is you're gonna want to do people who have lived in their house for a certain amount of time because Someone who just bought their house is not going to be interested in moving anytime soon, most likely. So what I like to do is I do length of residence. So you're going to want to do six plus years for sure and three to five years. So what this means is basically you want homeowners who have been in their house for more than three years. So I tested it both ways and the ones who had been in their house for more than three years were much more responsive than the homeowners as a whole without um, doing this a little bit further. Now, one thing I want to note is you're going to want to do this as, as you narrow the audience. So let's try this one more time. Homeowners. Okay. So now what that means is homeowners, they must have been in their residence for three to five years or six plus years and they're homeowners. So that's what you want. You don't want you know, the way that I have it before you want it like this. And then you're still going to exclude the realtors and you're still going to have removing Instagram and the right hand column. Everything else is going to be the same lifetime budget. You're going to knock this down to 20 bucks and then everything else is pretty much the same. And then when you click continue, you'll just use the same exact slideshow that you just used. And finally, let's create the retargeting ad. So retargeting is super simple. And again, I only spent a few pennies, a few couple dollars on this one. So it shouldn't be that that expensive. So basically for the retargeting, you're just going to just get rid of everything. You want it to just be like a super clean ad. You're not going to um, choose any of these things. So basically just... X out of everything, um, except for I would keep the, ex the realtor exclusions. So when you go to the audiences, you're going to create a new audience and it's going to go to custom audience. 
And Facebook actually keeps track of the people that have engaged with you on Facebook. So click engagement and then click video. And because this was a video slideshow, what will happen is you'll just pick the video. It says people who have watched at least three seconds of your video because the video is usually only going to be like 20 seconds long with a slideshow. So that's it. And then you'll just choose the video. So just let's just choose this one. And then um, you'll probably just leave this at five. Like it's not going to go back to 180 because it's open house probably just started. So um, and then that's it. You'll create an audience that says, um, open house retarget and create your audience and then click done and then that's it and then you'll basically just um, run the ad just like uh, the other ads that you had with the same video and all that stuff um, I would just use the copy from the buyer ad and that's it you're basically just kind of reminding them to show up all of the people from this open house like that I have been talking about they did show up but um I just wanted to run the retargeting ad just to make sure that they remembered and they were excited about it when they got there okay so that is it always be closing so create an engagement campaign for an upcoming open house re uh you're gonna run one campaign for a hundred dollars spend 80 bucks on the buyers and then 20 bucks on the sellers team up with a lender to cover the entire cost of the campaign if you can and where you might get stuck so getting beautiful photos of a home that's been well staged so sometimes real estate agents take photos themselves or sometimes you you can't get access to photos or the sellers don't cooperate with you and it's hard to get photos that have been you know staged well so that may be a place where you get stuck um, if you do not have good photos and if the house is not staged well you will not get th these results you just won't so make sure that that happens you also need to do the open house um, at a open house that's been priced right. So the market value, it has to be, the house has to be priced right either at market value or slightly under market value. In this case, the house was priced right. And then of course, all of the buyers put together drove the house up 25,000. So even if the house was priced slightly under, that would be better because hopefully if you drive all this traffic to a mega open house like this one then basically the price will go back up and get even more than you had expected and so getting through the ad targeting and the slideshow design this may be some place where people might get stuck as well so the ad targeting um if you if you need help with that, then just go through this video because it explains everything. And then the slideshow design, um, it's a little bit tricky, especially because Facebook hasn't rolled out all of the slideshow options to everyone yet. So if you are working with a realtor or if you are a realtor and you do not have the slideshow design that was available to me when I created the ad, then you're just going to have to wait, unfortunately, until Facebook rolls it out to you. I have clients that I work with who have it and then I have clients that I work with who do not so the theme of this slideshow was actually one of the reasons why it got a lot of engagement so hopefully you're working with a client that does have access to the themes for the slideshow okay so that is it thank you so much for attending this lesson and I will see you soon so this lesson is on why home evaluation campaigns don't work so I hear this all the time. I have a home value ad running and it's just not working. The, th the, real, the realization is uh, these haven't worked for a while, but funny story, my first real estate ad campaign ever was actually for a home evaluation, uh, you know, a home evaluation funnel. And we were getting leads for about $15 each, which is, is pretty good if these are true seller leads. But the people that were that were opting into this were just people who wanted to know the value of their home. It has nothing to do with the desired outcome that your ideal you know client wants. It has nothing to do with uh, selling your home or anything like that. It's simply just a data exchange. And nowadays, uh, Zillow and Trulia. Um, everybody knows you can just go on there and quickly get um, an estimate of what your home is worth and there's hundreds and hundreds of other free resources out there so I would just stay away from them uh, I kinda beat my head against the wall for a while trying to figure out why it wasn't working 
and uh, trying to figure out what works, which is now the uh, the seller lead funnel that I have in here for you guys with the checklist. Um, plus, this is where most agents are sending their traffic to some sort of website like this where you plug in your information and it gives you an estimate. So the reason why also a lot of agents have trouble with this is because you're sending somebody to a website with all these different distractions and all these different trap doors per se. At any given moment, um, there's so many other things that they can click on and lose sight of what they were even on the website for to begin with. That's why landing pages work so well because they're clean, they have one desired action and one only one action that the user can take. So that's why you should never ever ever send any traffic to a website if you're trying to collect information now if you're doing a blog post or something like that it's a little bit different but in this case you don't want to send somebody to a website and you definitely want to stay away from the home evaluation ad also another big thing that I've noticed is when you're doing the home eval ad the only reason someone is giving you their information is so that they can get the value of their home on the spot and most of the time it just says something like hey uh, the agent will give you a call soon and the person's left number one you just pissed them off and uh, number two they you know this isn't this isn't leading them into the desired action which is to list their home for sale with you or your client so that is a little bit about uh, my say on that topic I've tested it for a while I know a lot of people that have tested it as well and I would just stay as far away from those kinds of ads as you can so this lesson is on why home evaluation campaigns don't work. So I hear this all the time. I have a home value ad running and it's just not working. The, th the, real, the realization is uh, these haven't worked for a while, but funny story, my first real estate ad campaign ever was actually for a home evaluation, uh, you know, a home evaluation funnel. And we were getting leads for about $15 each, which is it's pretty good if these are true seller leads. But the people that were that were opting into this were just people who wanted to know the value of their home. It has nothing to do with the desired outcome that your ideal you know client wants. It has nothing to do with uh, selling your home or anything like that. It's simply just a data exchange. And nowadays, uh, Zillow and Trulia, um, everybody knows you can just go on there and quickly get um, an estimate of what your home is worth. And there's hundreds and hundreds of other free resources out there. So I would just stay away from them. Uh, I kind of beat my head against the wall for a while trying to figure out why it wasn't working and uh, trying to figure out what works, which is now the, uh, the seller lead funnel that I have in here for you guys with the checklist. Um, plus this is where most agents are sending their traffic to some sort of website like this where you plug in your information and it gives you an estimate so the reason why also a lot of agents have trouble with this is because you're sending somebody to a website with all these different distractions and all these different trap doors per se at any given moment um, there's so many other things that they can click on and lose sight of what they were even on the website for to begin with that's why landing pages work so well because they're clean they have one desired action and one only one action that the user can take so that's why you should never ever ever send any traffic to a website if you're trying to collect information now if you're doing a blog post or something like that it's a little bit different but in this case you don't want to send somebody to a website and you definitely want to stay away from the home evaluation ad. Also, another big thing that I've noticed is when you're doing the home eval ad, the only reason someone is giving you their information is so that they can get the value of their home on the spot. And most of the time, it just says something like, hey, uh, the agent will give you a call soon. And the person's left. Number one, you just pissed them off. And uh, number two, they, you know, this isn't this isn't leading them into the desired action which is to list their home for sale with you or your client so that is a little bit about uh, my say on that topic I've tested it for a while I know a lot of people that have tested it as well and I would just stay as far away from those kinds of ads as you can so in this lesson I'm gonna show you how to use the Facebook 
pixel to track your leads on Facebook. So we're gonna go down here to starting the ads manager, go down to pixels. We're gonna go to setup pixel, copy and paste code. You're gonna grab this code and bring it over to click funnels. We're gonna go to settings on our any of our funnels, and you're gonna put this in head track head tracking codes as you can see mine's already in there then you're just gonna scroll down and hit save now you want to go back to Facebook and you want to go back up here go to custom conversions and this is where you tell Facebook what you want to count as a lead so click create custom conversion you want to put in the URL of the page that you want to count as a lead so in this case let's use the thank you page we're going to copy and paste that there and we're going to count this as a complete registration and then we're going to assign a name to it so I just usually call it lead lead and clients name um, and you're going to hit create so now there's one more step that you got to do you got to go back to ads manager and you got to go down here to columns you gotta go to customize columns and then you gotta find what you just named it so I named it um, lead clients name if you want to press that I'll uncheck all these to make it easier for you guys to see in a sec so lead clients name and then you want to hit lead clients name and cost per leads clients name um, so now you just added this column so anytime someone touches the that, that thank you page it's gonna register in here as a conversion so it'll tell you what the value is and what what you're spending for every lead right here in the Facebook dashboard very easy to glance and see get a good picture of what's going on hopefully this all makes sense for you and you were able to follow me along if you have any questions about how the Facebook pixel works um, or other ways that you can use it just comment in the group and I'll be happy to help. All right, guys, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to split test for the lowest cost per lead. So basically, you wanna break the demographics up so you find which group responds the best to your ads, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So usually I do male and female in 10 year increments. This will make a lot more sense in a sec once I uh, show you exactly the process. But basically, I'm taking all these demographics and I'm running the same ad to all of them and seeing which one is going to perform the best and give me the lowest cost per lead so I can shut off the ones that aren't performing and keep the ones that are. So here's what that looks like. Okay guys, so here is how I set up my ads to find the lowest uh, cost per lead and the demographic that, that uh, converts the cheapest. So we're going to go here Let's say I have um, my ad already set up. Let's change this to $5 a day. We're gonna change the title just so we know what it is. So let's say we're starting at women 26 to 36. Now that's just the title, it's not gonna change anything. That's just so I know. And then we're gonna go down here. Um, it's already set to women. So we do 36, 26 to 36. And then we're gonna go over here and hit duplicate. Keep existing, keep same campaign. Okay, now, so we're gonna change this to women 37 to 47. So switch the age, 37 to 47. Perfect, so now, we're going to duplicate both of these and we're going to do the same exact thing so what do we have left uh, 48 to 58 to 58 and then the last one is going to be um, 40, 59 to 65 plus. So 
in my in my experience, women usually respond better um, to most real estate ads. But I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend just assuming that. I would take the time to test this out. So 59 to 65 plus. So now we're gonna copy all of these and we're gonna hit duplicate. And now we're gonna take all these and um, we're just gonna switch this to men. And then you guys get the point, you go through and you all you gotta do, so all the ages are set properly. All you gotta do is change the title so that you know exactly what um, what group we're targeting. So as long as your custom conversion is set up right, you should know um, on the Facebook Ads Manager screen, you should clearly be able to see which group is performing the cheapest. And then all you gotta do, like let's say that um, women 37 to 47, which usually performs pretty well for me, um, is is outperforming the rest. So all we're gonna do is turn this off. Let's say women uh, 37 to 47 is is converting at three dollars a lead, and then uh, 26 to 36 is uh, you know four dollars a lead. So we're gonna keep those and just turn off the ones that the lead cost is too high on, and that's pretty much it. So it's very very. This is a very very simple way to dramatically drive the cost of your leads down because you'll see that some of these ad sets will be converting at like 10 15 dollars a lead and just driving the average lead cost way up when you can just turn those on and focus on the age groups and uh, demographics that are converting so that is a very very simple way to drive the cost of your leads down the only thing you need is a little bit of a little a little bit of wiggle room with your budget because this is going to cost you about uh, five dollars a day per ad set so there's eight ad sets it's going to be forty dollars a day usually i run this for like two days um maybe three at the most um but if i'm being budget conscious two days should give me enough data to make a decision so those those of you guys um if you're having so let's say you have a budget issue they don't want to spend forty dollars a day then I would just go straight for uh, trying out the women right away because historically that's where I've gotten the most results. So that's pretty much it guys. This is how to lower the cost of your lead dramatically using split testing. All right, so this is a very simple way to get potential clients on the phone and it's not too difficult at all. So we're going to start on uh, leadexperiments.com. This is a tool. It's basically an email scraper. There's plenty of them out there. Uh, you can use different ones or you can try to do it manually. This just makes your life a little bit easier. Um, it's only $47 a month and uh, it's, it's what I use, so I highly recommend it. So <clears throat> we're going to go here to local business leads and uh, I'll, I'll go down to... Um, one of I share this account with somebody else, so there's a bunch of their crap in here. But so here I have uh, brokers. So once you're taken to this page, you want to type in the category of the the person that you're trying to um, attract. So you can do you can do this a few different ways. So you can type in real estate. Um, you have to put a city. So let's say like Tampa. Uh, so it comes up with 411, but not all of these are brokers or, or agents. So I found that if you type in realty instead of uh, you know real estate, you get a little bit better quality list. Like you get uh, you know Caldwell Banker, Hallmark Realty Corp, Universal Realty Group. Um, but what I like about this is that the emails that are they're giving you. The majority of them are actual like you know people's emails not not like um, you know it's not something like info at harperrealty.com so we know we're getting in front of actual um, you know people and it's hitting someone's you know physical inbox not an automated system you will get some automated systems but um, you know there's more people in here so you go through this and you just import leads 
and you keep doing this until you have th that's the part that I don't like about this is that you got to go through and do them um, 10 at a time but um, I highly recommend that you hire a VA just to do this all day for you um, and I'll, I'll kind of show you a little bit about that at the end of this video so once you're done doing this you're gonna have this whole list of, of people you see like uh, you know Beatrice dot Dunwood Doug Pete uh, see these are info but we got uh, Danielle uh, Tina all Frank all these people um, and these are relatively updated uh, from what I've found you'll still get a few bounce backs but lead experiments does a good job of scraping out the ones that that don't work uh, for the most part so the thing with this is it'll only email about a hundred people a day per email but you can upload a ton of other emails into here and use that as well so once you have your emails in there you you're gonna set up your email sequence you add your email that you're gonna be using um, I recommend you, you make a couple of emails just for this and not just um, you know use your same email but they do a pretty good job of, of keeping you from getting flagged by spam because uh, as you can see here it says reply s to this thread to stop future emails the more people reply s it, it shows up as a reply so um, you know it's kinda keeps you from getting flagged from spam and it also spreads the emails out um, over a few I think it's like a 24 hour period or something so that you know it's not sending a hundred emails at one time so this is a script that you're gonna use hey I'm the founder of a marketing agency that built a new Facebook ads campaign for realtors that uh, this is supposed to say generates uh, 40 to 80 leads a month for about $300 I'm willing to do a free trial for you and if you like my service and yield results then we can talk about working together is there a time listed here and this is just my Calendly link where I can show you the Facebook ads campaign or shoot back a time and I can probably make it work thanks ahead of time JR Rivas and then I said PS add me on Facebook if you'd like to chat there I just do this so that they can pull up my Facebook page and see that I'm a real person and not like a robot or like you know a foreign in a foreign country or something like that um, or I mean being in a foreign country is okay just not like you know a scammer trying to scam them or something like that so I will uh, as soon as I'm, I'm done putting this up I will hit next and then this will say start email this is I already have this sending right now um, because I was doing a campaign for myself but um, I recommend that you sort this by by states and try and then do the states in that city that way it's easier to keep track of so now that we know how to send this emails I really don't want you guys just sitting behind the screen all day trying to send emails that's okay at first but um, eventually you're gonna want to get a VA or find someone find one on upwork.com for like you know four dollars an hour just to, to blast people with emails all day long and uh, once they respond then you should take a look at my what to charge video and that'll flow you through the conversation of um, you know the conversation you should be having with the potential client so if you guys have any questions about this, make sure you post it in the student group and good luck. All right, so this is the Lead Experiments Facebook ad combo. Basically what we're gonna do here is run a Facebook ad to prospects we've also emailed and other agents on Facebook. So uh, first thing we're gonna do is go to Lead Experiments and we're gonna take the list of every agent we've ever emailed um, you want to have a, a pretty hefty lift size list size if you're gonna do this and this is how you're gonna go into Facebook and target them uh, take these instructions you just go to Facebook your ads account um, the three horizontal lines at the top left um, create custom audience you hit customers file and then you upload the CSV file that you've downloaded from lead experiments it's gonna pull those emails or phone numbers and it's gonna target the accounts linked with them on Facebook so once in the ad set you wanna find the custom audiences search bar 
and find your audience. So you're going to name this something that you know is easy, you can easily remember. And then once you're in the ad set, when you're building out your ad, you're going to actually uh, find that, whatever you named it, click that, and then you're going to start targeting that audience. So this is an example of one ad you can run. Attention realtors, would you love to increase exclusive lead flow in your business? In the following video, I'm going to show you the exact Facebook ad campaign I would run to make you a bunch of money. So let me know what you think. Okay, so using these cool tools given to us by Facebook, we're actually able to get in front of people based on their age, their gender, their income level, and also by behavior such as likely to move or if they have a, a relationship with Trulia or Zillow or another competitor. So there's never been a better time for getting the right ad in front of the right person. So once we find the right people to get your ad in front of, we're going to hit them in their newsfeed with an ad like this. So this says attention demographic area, know someone looking to buy a home, click here. We've put together a list, a free list of homes under $257,000, which is just so happens to be the median home price in this area. These homes are priced to sell and may even qualify for special financing. Click here and enter your info to get that now. So below that I have a slideshow that I created with different homes. So once they click on this ad, they're gonna be taken to this page. So this is called a landing page. The sole purpose of this page is to collect information from our potential prospects. Once we have their information, it will then be forwarded to you and you'll be following up with the list of homes under the median price in that area and starting to build a relationship and building rapport with this potential prospect. So this process is very, very simple as you can see. In the past, uh, most of my clients average about 40 to 80 leads a month for just about $300 in ad spend with this, with this method. I'd love to run this for you and I'd love to do it absolutely for free. Right now I'm offering free trials for people looking to work with me. I will do ads for you for one week at no cost to you. You just cover the ad spend. And if you like the results, we can talk about working together. And if not, no harm, no foul. Click the link above this video to book a time to chat with me. Again, my name is JR Rivas, Facebook ads expert, and I look forward to hearing from you. All right, guys, so as you can see, the video is super simple. It's nothing fancy. Um, I actually borrowed this from a guy named uh, Billy Jean. He's like a really big uh, Facebook ads guy. I highly recommend him, and you guys check his stuff out. Um, but once you have run that, you, want, you can also add a line in the end saying, um, I've also sent you an email about this topic if you feel more comfortable replying there. They'll be impressed by your Jedi skills that you know you're hitting them through email and on Facebook. They're going to wonder what how you're doing that and then they're going to automatically see you as an expert. But you only want to add that if you're running that to people that are um to realtors only in your list, not just realtors in general on Facebook. That's why I left it out in the end because I want to be able to run this to everybody. So don't forget um, you can also run this exact ad to uh, other, you know, realtors on Facebook. Now, you you kind of want to mix it up a little bit because if realtors start seeing the same ads um, verbatim, they're going to start ignoring this. So get creative with this. You don't. This is a great starting point and foundation, but don't feel like you have to do this um, word for word. There's a bunch of other different things you can try, but as the point of this method is to hit them twice. So you wanna be hitting them in their email and then also on Facebook. Because if you if you can create that connection in their mind, um, they're gonna be very impressed. And I've had, I've had people um, email, email me like, hey, I, I was uh, targeted by you on Facebook. Um, very impressed, let's chat, things like that. So they've likely never seen anything like this or noticed um, anything like this directly to them. I, I mean, I'm sure they've seen retargeting from Amazon and different places like that. But this definitely is what we call a pattern interrupt in the sense that they're not used to seeing this. So take this, go out there, have fun with it, and post your results in the group. All right, so this is an awesome method to use when you're still a little bit new um, you're probably not going to explode your business using this, 
but if you're struggling a bit at the beginning it's definitely worth exploring so this is called the networking club method basically all you're doing is going to a networking club and then you're gonna use a script that I'm gonna give you when you introduce yourself uh, because every club you always introduce yourself whether it's rotary or or what have you they always have a, a section at the beginning where everybody especially new members introduce themselves so I'm gonna show you how I found these clubs and then the script that I use to get agents and other businesses even to come to me so let me break away from this for a second okay so we're gonna go over to eventbrite.com we're gonna type in business and our area and hit search first thing we're gonna do is ignore the top three uh, because these are usually like national events and uh, most of the time these are these are just sponsored national events so that's not gonna help us so in the area that you search you want to go through all the events and ignore the ones that aren't actual networking clubs that meet on the red on the regular that are just doing like a one-time event because most of the time these are just going to be some sort of pitch events um, I mean still a great opportunity to meet people but if you're not good at networking that's not really going to help you so um, I just scroll down until I find something that is either put on uh, for free as like a city event or um, is an actual club that I can tell meets uh, on a regular basis. So just scrolling through here, uh, this one stands out at me right away because it's it's at the library, um, at the public library, and it's a free event. So I know that this isn't going to be some sort of pitch. Uh, most likely, it's put on by the city or some sort of uh, city uh, subsidy or something like that. So that'd be a good one to go to. So I'm just going to scroll through all all this and there's like tons and tons of events. Um, you can it's it's not hard to find something and there's plenty of them on on online businesses and stuff like that. That'd be a good opportunity just to go and network and meet people who you can serve um, through Facebook ads, not necessarily just realtors. But the way I did, I went about this is um, I found a club in Virginia Beach. It was called um, uh, I can't even remember what it's called anymore. But they met at this this place called Eagles Nest, and um, it was actually run by a realtor. And they had a, a neighboring uh, a sister club in the next town over that was also run by a realtor. So I, I was able to get in with their whole network um, relatively easily and for no money. So if if you go through this and you know you don't really find anything that you like, um, usually I do. But if you don't, then you're just gonna want to go to Google and type in uh, so Philadelphia networking clubs and all kinds of of clubs that that meet regularly and have all the and have a website are gonna pop up on here so here's a look this looks like a good one young young professional councils um, Irish Network Philadelphia tech events and networking there's all kinds of things especially if you're in like a major US city or a decent decent sized city um, there's all kinds of events and all kinds of, of clubs that you can go and try this so once we found our club we're gonna go back um, and this is the script that I use. There's always a section at the, there's always an, a time at the beginning of the club where um, new members introduce themselves and old members just kind of give everybody a spiel on what they do and usually they pass business cards around and stuff. So this is the script that I use that's worked well for me. I say, hey, my name, and I came up with this like totally on accident, but once I saw the response, I was like, wow, this is actually like, a viable a viable method so I say hey my name is uh, JR I run Facebook ads for small businesses mainly realtors and brokers and this is where you can throw in any other businesses that you work with as well I've grown my business by doing free trials for clients and letting them try my service for free just so we're super clear on what what you're doing with the option to sign up after and then I kind of make a little joke like they always sign up haha um, make sure that 
everyone knows that it's a joke, but also know that you're kind of serious too. So what's going to happen is all the the professions that you mentioned, the people there after this whole uh, introduction ceremony is done with, they're going to approach you um, or there's someone's going to introduce you to someone who who is one of these professions. And then that's when you can find out about their business and basically just run through the script um, that I have, the qualifying script, and just use that as questions to ask the potential prospect. And then you tell them about your your trial program and hopefully they'll be inclined to work with you. Um, I've never, I don't think I've ever had someone not work with me um, after I was able to, to uh, build the rapport and, and tell them about my program if it was somebody that I met um, in person at an event like this. So good luck, guys. Let me know how it goes for you in the student group. All right. So this is one of my favorite ways to prospect because it is one of the most proactive ways. And uh, when I was starting off, this was one of the ways I just kind of pounded this method out as much as I could to, uh, you know, generate as many new clients as I possibly could so let me show you how this works it's not the easiest thing in the world and it is a little time intensive but I mean the results are, speak for themselves so we're gonna start off here in Google and we're gonna we're, we're, we're gonna search for a broker someone that we want to work with so let's type in uh, Phoenix <clears throat> uh, real estate team you want to say team because you want to look for for uh, people like this so Mendoza team the the Mel Melker agency uh, Morrison team people like that where you can clearly identify who runs the team so let's click on the first one right here okay so uh, the Mendoza team they're located in Phoenix uh, meet Mike Mendoza so let's click here this looks like the, the person the decision maker so we're gonna see if we can find a way to contact him. So, bam, contact Mike. So, uh, his email address. Uh, sorry, you guys can't see because I have two screens up right now. But basically, when you click contact, uh, a box pops up where you can send him an email. So his email is Mike at Mendoza Team dot com. So what I do is I go to Facebook, and I see if this is associated with a Facebook account that's public so Mike at Mendoza team dot com uh, okay look so Mike came right up and uh, okay even better so we have uh, four mutual friends um, a few of which are clients so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send Mike a friend request so the thing with this is it's Mike now like he's the chances of him approving me are pretty high because we have a few friends um, this was literally guys when I was searching for an example to show you this is literally the first one that I clicked and just the longer you're in business um, all these brokers and teams they're they're connected they go to events together they know each other so chances are um, it, all the brokers are connected by at least you know one or two degrees of separation so it's really not a huge world or a huge market so at this point I could just say hey uh, you know to my client hey can you introduce me to this Mike Mendoza guy um, I have something for him and I just want to make sure that he gets it so I'm gonna show you what you're gonna do with this information so I recommend making like a spreadsheet and just putting down 10 people who you'd like to work with who are easily accessible on Facebook and you also have their email because I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with this information in a sec so we are gonna send this person a personalized video to get this attention guys I didn't invent this method I've actually borrowed this from a few other marketers and one who particularly made this uh, this method of marketing famous this method of client acquisition but the reason I like it is because it works really really well and it's out of the ordinary whenever I'm competing and I know that I'm competing with other people on a project or a job I always send a video if I uh, if I really really want to make sure that I, I get the person's attention I send them a video showing them exactly what I'm going to do for them and then just closing them at the end of the video and from what I've seen and, and in my experience this has worked extremely extremely well 
and I even do this for people who um, I kind who I kind of know. Like I had one of my um, friends is like her husband who I'd met maybe once or twice was uh, in real estate, and I made him a personalized video like the one I'm I'm about to show you, and it went it went awesome. At first I thought it'd be kind of weird because you know this person doesn't really know me. But once they see how much work you put into just getting their attention, you know, you have their attention and, and they're listening. So um, the next clip is going to be of the actual video that I'm going to send this person and then I'm going to show you how I deliver it. Hey Mike, JR here and I'm reaching out because I see we're mutual friends with uh, one of my clients, Ryan Finch. And I've been working a lot with real estate agents and brokers throughout the country. So I just wanted to reach out to you in a very personalized way and show you what I have to offer and how I can help you make a bunch of money. So let me know what you think. So this is actually the exact ad that we're running for Ryan right now. And it says, attention Virginia Beach. Do you know anyone looking to buy a home? Follow here. We've compiled a free report of homes for sale under $257,000. Some of these homes may even qualify for special financing programs. Follow here. Thanks. And then I have three pictures of homes under the median home price in that area. So what we're going to do is click here and then it takes us to what's called a landing page. And this is what that looks like. It's going to have a picture of a home in the background and it says, welcome to Virginia Beach homes list under $257,000. Click below and enter your information and get your free report of homes for sale priced under $257,000. Some of these homes may even qualify for a special financing program. We're going to click here and ask for name and email. So let's say uh, JR test, JR, uh, here we go. Get me my list. And then that's going to take them to this squeeze page. This is designed to squeeze more information out of that prospect. So once they enter their information on here, we're also going to filter out who's potentially a seller with this question. Would you be interested in a free report on how to raise the value of your home before selling it? Yes, I'd love that. Click submit and it takes you to a thank you page. At this point, the lead then comes to you. So let me show you how this ad is performing. In the last 30 days, we've had 589 visitors and 100 exclusive buyer leads all for about $300. So we're only spending $300, $10 a day budget on this ad. And at, at first glance, it looks very simple, but the actual secret and the reason that this ad works is the targeting that Facebook allows us to use. So if you're interested in having something done for you like this, I'd love to run it for you and I'd love to run it for you absolutely for free. I don't believe in asking for your business. I believe in earning your business. So with that being said, if you're interested in something like this, just reach back out to me and I'll be happy to run this for you for a week. If you like the results, we can talk about working together. And if not, no harm, no foul. Once again, my name is JR Rivas and I look forward to hearing from you. All right, guys, so this step is completely optional. Um, I like to do this if it's a client that I really want to nail because it does cost a little bit of money. So we're gonna buy the domain name. Watch this mike mendoza dot com okay looks like it is available go figure verifying availability okay looks good continue to cart so i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna i mean i'm gonna take off all this stuff and uh continue <clears throat> and we're only gonna do it for one year so for about twelve dollars and seventeen cent cost, um, you know, the, it I won't say dramatically, but it does raise the chances that your client is going to see this. Because the last thing you want to do is spend all the money on all the time, sorry, on this, and then the the prospect not even watch it. So invest a little bit of money. I mean, if you do this for you know ten different prospects, you spend about one hundred and twenty bucks, and I don't think I've ever gone, you know more than 0 for 5 or something like that on this with this method. So um, I recommend you do this part, but it's totally up to you. Um, so you can kind of decide that for yourself. So I'm going to proceed to check out. Okay, great. So we got our domain now. We're going to scroll all the way down on the GoDaddy page. Um, and we're going to go to My Account. You're going to go to Manage 
domains and you're gonna wait it's, it's gonna take a little bit for the domain to be ready so just be patient maybe like 20 minutes and you're gonna click use my domain and we're gonna say connect to existing site and right here we're gonna forward this to a click funnels landing page that we're about to make so just leave this uh, there for now and um, we'll be right back to it in a second okay so I've built out this landing page and this is where we're gonna direct our prospect to and there's gonna be a video here that auto plays so let me show you how to do that once your video is done you're gonna go to wistia.com make an account it's uh, free up to a certain amount of videos and we're gonna go to project new project and then we're gonna upload our video here I'm gonna hit browse find the video upload it and we're gonna be good to go so what this does is by using Wistia you can tell when the prospect has actually opened the video and it's also gonna show you exactly where they were you do this all this under stats it's gonna show you exactly where they were when they opened it um, and it's gonna also give their IP address not really important but just just some uh, information for you there so what you're gonna do is embed the video from Wistia they're gonna give you a custom embed code once it's uh, uploaded and you're gonna embed that in here also with Wistia you can do an auto you can make the video autoplay so as soon as they hit this page the video is gonna start playing so once we have this done we're gonna save it you're gonna make sure that you put your Calendly uh, URL in here also by the way um, so once that's done you're gonna save it you're gonna exit and then we're gonna go to the actual page grab the URL and we're gonna go back to our domain name back to GoDaddy and you're gonna forward that domain to that ClickFunnels site so that way when you go to deliver it to your potential prospect you can just um, send them the domain name so watch this MikeMendoza.com and once they get there they're gonna be on this page that you have set up and the presentation is gonna start right away so this is the most effective way that I found to do this um, I'm gonna share this funnel under the video so you guys uh, for easy access and everything um, if you guys have any questions about this part make sure you ask it in the group um, setting everything is pretty straightforward uh, the, with Wistia and embedding it into your click funnels but um, I know it can get kind of tricky for some people so if you do struggle with that don't feel free to uh, you know ask about it in the group so now that we have our video done our landing page is done it's redirected now we're gonna deliver this to the potential prospect so we're going to send this to a prospect on Facebook and this is the script I use if we have a client that they know so if we have a client that they know I say uh, I send a one message that says, hey, uh, I see we have a mutual friend in client's name. Are you familiar with him? Usually they say, oh, yeah, blah, blah, what's up? Um, second message, I've been working with client's name to help him generate some leads for his team using Facebook ads. I've created this video to show you how I'm doing this. Just click here to check it out um, and then put in the URL and let me know what you think. And that's pretty much it. That'll get them uh to watch your video so if it's also you so you're also gonna send them an email so you wanna make sure um, you know how I showed you in the beginning to find uh, their email address you're also gonna send them an email because you, you wanna make sure that they get this so um, this is my email script I've been working with our mutual friend uh, in clients name to help him generate some leads for his team using Facebook ads I've created this video to show you how I'm doing this just click here to check it out and let me know what you think thanks for the subject line I use the clients name as the subject line that way there it's someone they're familiar with and they'll usually um, you know they'll open that email so if it's a cold prospect on Facebook I say Mike I was looking over your website and I love what you guys are doing in Phoenix um, this shows that you know you've taken the time to look them up and uh, you're not just blasting this out there um, I love what you guys are doing in Phoenix I made this video to show you how I think I can help you guys generate more leads let me know what you think uh, watch this Mike Mendoza .com. thanks JR and if it's a cold prospect um, I send the same 
Facebook script, but through email with the subject line uh, question or quick question, I found gets decent open rate. So keys to success. If you have mutual friend, if you have a mutual friend, simply ask them for referrals first, a mutual client, sorry. So most brokers, I found most brokers know each other. Um, they, the average broker knows at least 20 other brokers. But if you ask them for referrals, they're usually only going to give you two or three. So obviously they're not going to go through, they don't have the time or desire to go through their entire list of contacts and send you a list of like 50 people who are, who know who they are. But you can assume most of the time that brokers know each other and it's easily verifiable through, you know, Facebook mutual friends. So go for the referral, ask for the referrals first um, before you start doing this. But once that dries up, then you kind of want to go take an initiative, and then that's when this method comes into play. It helps if you can find a realtor you have mutual friends with to improve your chance of de deliverability, even if one of those friends isn't a client. So if you can find a realtor, a broker, a um, broker ideally, that you have mutual friends with, um, it just increases your chances of getting accepted as a friend and then them watching the video later on. So make the video, the middle of this video generic so you can reuse it and then just make the beginning um, personalized. Sometimes I make the beginning and the end personalized. And what you want to wait until they accept your friend request before they do any work. When you send somebody a message on Facebook, it goes to a spam box if you aren't friends. So if you wait till they accept your friend request, then you know that when you send them a message, it's going to pop up and they're going to see it and, you know, be able to, to check it out. Some people don't even know how to check their Facebook spam box. So if this is for a cold prospect, you want to do everything that I did in the video. Just leave out the part about having a mutual friend or a mutual client or whatever and just uh, focus on making it specialized for them and just say that you know I found you I found your website the same like what basically what the script says I found your website I, I like I love what you guys are doing um, and you know proceed to tell them you know check this out so that's how I go about this um, this is extremely effective uh, for cold cold prospects I know a lot of you guys might not have any clients yet so this is a great way to start getting some traction all right, so this is one of my favorite ways to prospect because it is one of the most proactive ways. And uh, when I was starting off, this was one of the ways I just kind of pounded this method out as much as I could to, uh, you know, generate as many new clients as I possibly could. So let me show you how this works. It's not the easiest thing in the world, and it is a little time intensive, but I mean, the results are, speak for themselves. So we're going to start off here in Google and we're going to we're, we're, we're going to search for a broker, someone that we want to work with. So let's type in uh, Phoenix <clears throat> a real estate team. You want to say team because you want to look for for uh, people like this. So Mendoza team, the, the Mel Melker agency, uh, Morrison team. People like that where you can clearly identify who runs the team. So let's click on the first one right here. Okay, so uh, the Mendoza team, they're located in Phoenix. Uh, meet Mike Mendoza. So let's click here. This looks like the, the person, the decision maker. So we're going to see if we can find a way to contact him. So bam, contact Mike. So uh, his email address, uh, sorry, you guys can't see because I have two screens up right now. But basically, when you click contact, a, a box pops up where you can send him an email. So his email is mike at mendozateam.com. So what I do is I go to Facebook and I see if this <clears throat> is associated with a Facebook account that's public. So mike at mendozateam.com. Uh, okay, look, so Mike came right up. And uh, okay, even better. So we have uh, four mutual friends, um, a few of which are clients. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send Mike a friend request. So the thing with this is it's 
Mike now, like he's the chances of him approving me are pretty high because we have a few friends. Um, this was literally, guys, when I was searching for an example to show you, this is literally the first one that I clicked. And just the longer you're in business, um, all these brokers and teams, they're, they're connected. They go to events together. They know each other. So chances are um, it, all the brokers are connected by at least, you know, one or two degrees of separation. So it's really not a huge world or a huge market. So at this point, I could just say, hey, uh, you know, to my client, hey, can you introduce me to this Mike Mendoza guy? Um, I have something for him, and I just want to make sure that he gets it. So I'm going to show you what you're going to do with this information. So I recommend making like a spreadsheet and just putting down 10 people who you'd like to work with who are easily accessible on Facebook, and you also have their email because I'm going to show you what we're going to do with this information in a sec. So we are gonna send this person a personalized video to get this attention. Guys, I didn't invent this method. I've actually borrowed this from a few other marketers and one who particularly made this uh, this method of marketing famous, this method of client acquisition. But the reason I like it is because it works really, really well and it's out of the ordinary. Whenever I'm competing and I know that I'm competing with other people on a project or a job, I always send a video if I uh, if I really really want to make sure that I, I get the person's attention I send them a video showing them exactly what I'm going to do for them and then just closing them at the end of the video and from what I've seen and, and in my experience this has worked extremely extremely well and I even do this for people who um, I kind of who I kind of know like I had one of my um, friends is like her husband who I'd met maybe once or twice was uh, in real estate and I made him a personalized video like the one I'm, I'm about to show you and it went it went awesome at first I thought it'd be kind of weird because you know this person doesn't really know me but once they see how much work you put into just getting their attention you know you have their attention and, and they're listening so um, the next clip is gonna be of the actual video that I'm going to send this person and then I'm gonna show you how I deliver it Hey Mike, JR here, and I'm reaching out because I see we're mutual friends with uh, one of my clients, Ryan Finch, and I've been working a lot with real estate agents and brokers throughout the country, so I just wanted to reach out to you in a very personalized way and show you what I have to offer and how I can help you make a bunch of money. So let me know what you think. So this is actually the exact ad that we're running for Ryan right now, and it says, Attention Virginia Beach. Do you know anyone looking to buy a home? Follow here. We've compiled a free report of homes for sale under $257,000. Some of these homes may even qualify for special financing programs. Follow here. Thanks. And then I have three pictures of homes under the median home price in that area. So what we're going to do is click here and then it takes us to what's called a landing page. And this is what that looks like. It's going to have a picture of a home in the background. And it says, Welcome to Virginia Beach Homes List under $257,000. Click below and enter your information and get your free report of homes for sale priced under $257,000. Some of these homes may even qualify for a special financing program. We're going to click here and it asks for name and email. So let's say uh, JR Test. JR. Uh, here we go get me my list and then that's gonna take them to this squeeze page this is designed to squeeze more information out of that prospect so once they enter their information on here we're also gonna filter out who's potentially a seller with this question would you be interested in a free report on how to raise the value of your home before selling it yes I'd love that click submit and it takes you to a thank you page at this point the lead then comes to you so let me show you how this ad is performing in the last 30 days, we've had 589 visitors and 100 exclusive buyer leads, all for about $300. So we're only spending $300, $10 a day budget on this ad. And at, at first glance, it looks very simple, but the actual secret and the reason that this ad works is the targeting that Facebook allows us to use. So if you're interested in having something done for you like this, I'd love to run it for you, and I'd love to run it for you absolutely for free. I don't believe in asking for your business. I believe in earning your business. So with that being said, if you're interested in something like this, just reach back out to me, and I'll be happy to run this for you for a week. 
If you like the results, we can talk about working together. And if not, no harm, no foul. Once again, my name is J.R. Rivas, and I look forward to hearing from you. All right, guys, so this step is completely optional. Um, I like to do this if it's a client that I really want to nail because it does cost a little bit of money. So we're going to buy the domain name. Watch this, Mike Mendoza dot com okay looks like it is available go figure verifying availability okay looks good continue to cart so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna I mean I'm gonna take off all this stuff and uh, continue <clears throat> and we're only gonna do it for one year so for about twelve dollars and seventeen cent cost, um, you know, the, it I won't say dramatically, but it does raise the chances that your client is going to see this. Because the last thing you want to do is spend all the money on all the time, sorry, on this, and then the the prospect not even watch it. So invest a little bit of money. I mean, if you do this for you know ten different prospects, you spend about one hundred and twenty bucks, and I don't think I've ever gone, you know more than 0 for 5 or something like that on this with this method. So um, I recommend you do this part, but it's totally up to you. Um, so you can kind of decide that for yourself. So I'm going to proceed to check out. Okay, great. So we got our domain now. We're going to scroll all the way down on the GoDaddy page. Um, and we're going to go to My Account. You're going to go to Manage Domains. And you're going to wait. It's, it's going to take a little bit for the domain to be ready. So just be patient, maybe like 20 minutes. And you're going to click Use My Domain. And we're going to say Connect to Existing Site. And right here, we're going to forward this to a ClickFunnels landing page that we're about to make. So just leave this uh, there for now. And um, we'll be right back to it in a second. Okay, so I've built out this landing page, and this is where we're going to direct our prospect to. And there's going to be a video here that auto plays. So let me show you how to do that. Once your video is done, you're going to go to wistia.com, make an account. It's uh, free up to a certain amount of videos. And we're going to go to project, new project. And then we're going to upload our video here. I'm going to hit browse, find the video, upload it and we're gonna be good to go. So what this does is by using Wistia, you can tell when the prospect has actually opened the video and it's also gonna show you exactly where they were. You do this all this under stats. It's gonna show you exactly where they were when they opened it um, and it's gonna also give their IP address. Not really important, but just, just some uh, information for you there. So what you're gonna do is embed the video from Wistia, they're gonna give you a custom embed code once it's uh, uploaded, and you're gonna embed that in here. Also, with Wistia, you can do an auto, you can make the video autoplay. So as soon as they hit this page, the video is gonna start playing. So once we have this done, we're gonna save it. You're gonna make sure that you put your Calendly uh, URL in here. Also, by the way, um, so once that's done, you're gonna save it. You're gonna exit. And then we're going to go to the actual page, grab the URL, and we're going to go back to our domain name, back to GoDaddy, and you're going to forward that domain to that ClickFunnels site. So that way, when you go to deliver it to your potential prospect, you can just um, send them the domain name. So watch this. MikeMendoza.com and once they get there they're gonna be on this page that you have set up and the presentation is gonna start right away so this is the most effective way that I have found to do this um, I'm gonna share this funnel under the video so you guys uh, for easy access and everything um, if you guys have any questions about this part make sure you ask it in the group um, setting everything is pretty straightforward uh, the, with Wistia and embedding it into your click funnels but um, I know it can get kind of tricky for some people. So if you do struggle with that, don't feel free to uh, you know ask about it in the group. So now that we have our video done, our landing page is done, it's redirected. Now we're gonna deliver this to the potential prospect. 
So we're going to send this to a prospect on Facebook and this is the script I use if we have a client that they know. So if we have a client that they know, I say, uh, I send a one message that says, hey, uh, I see we have a mutual friend in client's name. Are you familiar with him? Usually they say, oh yeah, blah, blah, what's up? Um, second message, I've been working with client's name to help him generate some leads for his team using Facebook ads. I've created this video to show you how I'm doing this. Just click here to check it out um, and then put in the URL and let me know what you think. And that's pretty much it. That'll get them uh, to watch your video. So if it's also, you, so you're also gonna send them an email. So you wanna make sure, um, you know, how I showed you in the beginning to find uh, their email address. You're also gonna send them an email because you, you wanna make sure that they get this. So um, this is my email script. I've been working with our mutual friend uh, in client's name to help him generate some leads for his team using Facebook ads. I've created this video to show you how I'm doing this. Just click here to check it out and let me know what you think. Thanks. For the subject line, I use the client's name as the subject line. That way there it's someone they're familiar with and they'll usually um, you know, they'll open that email. So if it's a cold prospect on Facebook, I say Mike, I was looking over your website and I love what you guys are doing in Phoenix. Um, this shows that you know, you've know you taken the time to look them up and uh, you're not just blasting this out there. Um, I love what you guys are doing in Phoenix. I made this video to show you how I think I can help you guys generate more leads. Let me know what you think. Uh, watch this, MikeMendoza.com. Thanks, JR. And if it's a cold prospect, um, I send the same Facebook script but through email with the subject line uh, question or quick question I found gets decent open rate so keys to success if you have mutual friend if you have a mutual friend simply ask them for referrals first a mutual client sorry so most brokers I found most brokers know each other um, they the average broker knows at least 20 other brokers but if you ask them for referrals they're usually only going to give you two or three so obviously they're not going to go through, they don't have the time or desire to go through their entire list of contacts and send you a list of like 50 people who are, who know who they are. But you can assume most of the time that brokers know each other and it's easily verifiable through, you know, Facebook mutual friends. So go for the referral, ask for the referrals first um, before you start doing this. But once that dries up, then you kind of want to go take an initiative, and then that's when this method comes into play. It helps if you can find a realtor you have mutual friends with to improve your chance of de deliverability, even if one of those friends isn't a client. So if you can find a realtor, a broker, a um, broker ideally, that you have mutual friends with, um, it just increases your chances of getting accepted as a friend and then them watching the video later on. So make the video, the middle of this video generic so you can reuse it and then just make the beginning um, personalized. Sometimes I make the beginning and the end personalized. And what you want to wait until they accept your friend request before they do any work. When you send somebody a message on Facebook, it goes to a spam box if you aren't friends. So if you wait till they accept your friend request, then you know that when you send them a message, it's going to pop up and they're going to see it and, you know, be able to, to check it out. Some people don't even know how to check their Facebook spam box. So if this is for a cold prospect, you want to do everything that I did in the video. Just leave out the part about having a mutual friend or a mutual client or whatever and just uh, focus on making it specialized for them and just say that you know I found you I found your website the same like what basically what the script says I found your website I, I like I love what you guys are doing um, and you know proceed to tell them you know check this out so that's how I go about this um, this is extremely effective uh, for cold cold prospects I know a lot of you guys might not have any clients yet so this is a great way to start getting some traction alright so this lesson is super important um, it's on how to get a proper testimonial and then leverage it from your clients. So you want to wait till your client is on a high before you ask. So in the first week when they're amazed with your results is a great, great time to get a testimonial. Um, or after a big 
weekly or monthly leads report that's out of the out of the usual or if you if you've been doing great uh, for them the whole time then really any time uh, is a good time to ask for a testimonial but I usually wait till they're on a high because that then they're more they feel more obligated to give you the testimonial as soon as possible and not take you know two weeks to get this to you so how to make sure you get a rock solid testimonial so with this particular particular client I emailed him and I and I, I used the subject line what would it take dot 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 and then once he opened it it said uh, to get a 30 second testimonial from you shot on your iPhone so I said this because I wanted to make sure that he knew that this wasn't gonna be like you know Jurassic Park 4 or anything it was just gonna be like a low budget uh, production done on his phone of him literally just talking about his experience so then he he replied back and he said what script would you like me to use so this is perfect so in the first in the first uh, message I'm kind of vague with them um, I don't tell them like exactly what I want because I don't want to seem like I'm trying to coach them into saying good things about me um, I, I do honestly just want them to tell the truth but I do kinda wanna guide them in the direction of an ideal testimonial as well so once he said what script should I use I said something aligns along the lines of hey this is Ryan Finch owner of first class realty uh, just wanted to take a sec to talk about JR. He's been uh, generating leads for us using Facebook ads in the past month. He's generated about 100 leads, exclusive uh, quality leads for about $300. I highly recommend them if you're an agent or run a team. So I kept it very short and simple. Um, I, I kind of want him to know this isn't a big time commitment. Then I said, um, you know, something like that. You know the lingo and stuff that agents like to hear better than I do. Also, please make sure when you do it that you hold the phone horizontal instead of vertical. Um, if you if he holds it vertical, when when it comes time to upload this to uh, run this as an ad or something on Facebook or send it to someone, it's not gonna look right. Like it's gonna it's gonna have like the black the black border um, that we see all the time when people don't do this. So um, I just said, hey, make sure you hold it horizontal and. I said, um, you know, I told him, you know, the lingo and stuff that agents like to hear better than me. That way he knows to, to, to say, OK, so these leads are better than uh, Zillow or, or whatever. And you'll see in a sec what he actually goes and does in the uh, testimonial as a result of this. So your client is going to know what what other agents um, want to hear better than you. So you kind of want to give them free range, but I use this just to kind of steer them in the right direction. Like I want, I want them to say how much we're spending, how many leads we're getting. That's probably the two most important things that you want to make sure that that they nail down. So now let's take a look at what a testimonial like that looks like. Hey guys, Ryan Finch here, uh, owner of First Class Real Estate and the Ryan Finch Real Estate Team. Uh, also author of the book called Explode, uh, how to sell 500 homes uh, in a year. So anyway, I want to take a minute to tell you guys, I've been working with this guy, JR, um, probably about six months now. We've gotten into a place where we're spending $300 a month and generating 100 leads just on social media. Um, I highly recommend you guys use them. The, uh, the other options are you do something like a Boomtown or Tiger Leads or Money Tree or any of these other things where you pay for a website plus pay for the leads and you're gonna end up paying way more money just to have uh, the same amount of people that you can have using uh, JR. So anyway, reach out to him, he'll give you the information, and uh, I just wanted to tell you I recommend it. Again, Ryan Finch, First Class Real Estate, take care. Okay, great. So now that you've seen how the testimonial um, is done, now we're gonna talk about how to use this to get more clients. So anytime uh, you have an upcoming appointment with a potential prospect or a prospect, uh, you want to send them the testimonial beforehand in an email disguised as a confirmation. So you don't want to jump out and just say, hey John, look how awesome I am, check out this client testimonial. You kind of want to uh, ease it in there as if it's no big deal. So this is how I go about it. So hey John, I'm just sending you a reminder about our phone call tomorrow at 1. In the meantime, check out what one of my other clients has to say about my services and just link there and just end it right there that way you're kind of nonchalant about it you're not really trying to sell yourself too much to the client but you are showing him 
that you're awesome, uh, you have other clients, this is working for other people. This is especially important if you're getting the client from an email or some sort of like cold source where they don't know too much about you because this is all about pre-framing. So if you're not pre-framing before you get on the phone, it's gonna be a lot more difficult to close that client um, either right then and there or, or get them on a trial because they're gonna, the, the number one question in their mind is, is this person legit? Uh, can I trust this person? They're gonna be wanting to see your website. They're gonna wanna ask a million questions that, that really aren't necessary. So by doing this, you get a ton of pre-framing. Um, they know you're legit. They'll probably go and see if your client's legit. Or most of the time, if it's uh, if you're working with a broker, they would have heard of that of them already, or possibly even know them, which is even better. So you want to make sure you do this uh, for pre-framing purposes. So if you do this, by the time the prospect gets on the phone, he or she will be super warmed up. So this will make it this will make for a totally different conversation like I just said. So this is this person is going to be way way more interested at this point and way more likely to do business with you. So you can also use this as a video ad to retarget. So if you do run the uh the curious student with a twist method you can then retarget with this video and be like, look, um, it's almost it's almost kind of as if you don't want people to opt in the first time because you want them to see this awesome testimonial and be sold before they get uh, on the phone with you. Um, but we're still, you know, we're still sending this in an email beforehand to confirm the appointment and show them how awesome we are. So um, this is the recommended ad copy uh, that I would use for a retargeting video with this testimonial as the the video so on the fence about booking a call with me to talk about generating leads using Facebook ads check out the video below to see what my current clients have to say about me so this is gonna kinda catch them off guard because they're gonna be like well yeah I am kinda skeptical of people on the internet I mean who isn't but then you're giving them social proof and easing that skepticism it just makes for a this this just works so well because it just makes for um, a much nicer in, and easier interaction so you want to try to get this first client testimonial at all costs all right so this lesson is on what to charge your clients so before we get started it's important to know how agents and brokers get paid so let's say your agent or uh, if your clients a broker their agent sells a house for three hundred thousand dollars whether they're the buying agent or the listing agent here's the breakdown so the standard commission is six percent now this is variable sometimes it's five sometimes it's seven but let's just use six as a baseline average so this commission is paid by the the seller of the home so for three hundred thousand dollars that's they pay eighteen thousand dollars on commission but there's a listing agent and a buyer's agent. Usually the listing agent will pay out a commission to attract buyers into selling their home. So the commission comes from the seller. It's split between the seller, seller's agent or the listing agent and the buying the buyer's agent. So usually how it works is they get 3% each of the 6% commission. So your agent would walk away with $9,000. But wait. In many cases, the agent has to pay, has to then flip and pay the commission uh, to a broker. So this can range from 50% to a flat fee. So to keep it simple, let's use 1.5% as a base number. So on a $300,000 home, the agent or broker is set to make $4,500. So it's important to know this when working with agents because you can search what the median home price for sale in that area is and if you can find out by talking to them how many homes they're selling um, a month you can roughly figure out how much they're making so what do you do with this information you use it as ammo to qualify the person that is the prospective client so this is how I flow the conversation into asking about this information because you can't just jump out and say well how many homes are you selling um, that'll come off as really pushy. They'll be turned off by it. So 
you kind of have to build a rapport. So this is the order in which I, I ask questions. When I'm talking to a client, I have these questions uh, written out for, my, for me and I just glance at them. And I let the conversation drift off into whatever they want to talk about, but I always bring it back to these core questions. So let me go through them and talk a little bit about the psychology. So number one, uh, what made, so I usually say, hey, Mr. Uh, Realtor, Mr. Broker, uh, what made you, I'm just curious, I start all my calls this way, what made you want to reach out to me? And they'll say something like, oh, um, you know, I got your email or I saw your ad or this or that. And something about they'll mention something about it that impressed impress them. So they'll they'll sell themselves on you from the, the beginning. This is great for setting the tone of the conversation. So my second question is why do you feel like this is something you need at this point in your career? This is when they'll sell themselves even further on the fact like, okay, I kind of need to make a change in my life. So they'll say something like, Oh, uh, the economy has tanked or, oh, we're doing good, but I just want to do more. I'm just really hungry. I'm motivated. They'll tell you all their problems um, in regards to doing that business and why they feel like they need more business. So then I say, uh, how long have you been in business? This is just to get them talking a little bit more. How are you getting leads now? This is a big one because you, you can see um, you know what they're doing and in, in the, with the tonality of their voice, you can kind of tell how happy they are with that. And then what else have you tried is huge because you kind of want clients that have already been trying things online or looking for new ways to get leads um, because these I found, at least in my personal exp experience, these are the people who make uh, good clients. So at this point, if you feel like you've built trust and, and credibility and, and a good rapport, uh, then ask, so how many how many houses are you currently moving a month? And just ask in like a really, really uh, casual way. And then finally, uh, you want to ask them, this, this question is kind of optional, um, but I'll tell you why I asked it. So I say, do you pay your, your broker a flat fee or just a split? So this isn't 100% accurate because it's different in every state, uh, the way commissions are paid. But the way I think of it is this way. The agents that are more successful, they'll want to pay their broker a flat fee because they know that they're producing value and it's better than, you know, a 50-50 split to them. If they're doing a 50-50 split, um, that means that maybe they haven't worked up to that yet. But like I said, this isn't set in stone. So I would just ask it if, if the question comes up and just kind of gauge them a little bit based on that. So this is the dagger. So how many houses would you need? to sell through my program to justify $3,000, a $3,000 monthly investment. So usually they'll say something like, oh, five or six or something like that. And then you say, great. Well, the good news is uh, plenty of my other agents that we worked. Um, they'll say anything from, I mean, I don't know. I've gotten like three, four, five, uh, somewhere around there. So then you say, great. Well, the good news is plenty of other agents we've worked with and um you never want to lie so we've as in you know our group our facebook ads for real estate group you counts as we um are selling about that amount with my program and my fee is only a thousand dollars a month and you cover a small three hundred dollar monthly ad spend i offer a free trial where i let you know where i let you try me out for a week and if you enjoy my service then we can work together if not no harm no foul sound good and uh, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about this in the how to close clients if you suck um, if you suck at sales lesson. But here's kind of the psychology. By saying a really big uh, number up front, and if I'm talking to a broker, I'll, I'll even use a bigger number. But you're kind of jumping out there. And then when you come reel them back in and ask for a thousand, um, it's kind of like, oh, OK, I could see this. It's kind of like, um, you know, if someone comes up to you and they're like, let's get married, you're going to be like, what? But then they're like, okay, how about a date? You're like, uh, okay. You're more likely to say yes to the date because they just made this outrageous request and, and then reeled you back in. So that's kind of the way I look at it. So hopefully this has helped you uh, qualify people and uh, you know feel them out a little bit to know what you charge. I recommend um, for the lowest I ever want to see anyone charge is like $500 a month. But for... Um, I think a thousand dollars is a good starting point and then just let them know like, Hey, we're going to renegotiate, um, in a couple of months. Cause remember you still have to fill their pipe, their pipeline 
um, up. This is what what this is all about: filling their pipeline with seller leads. And the leads are going to take a couple of months um, to close because that's just the nature of the business. But the good news is that your your agent or broker they understand this. Um, like my my agents, whenever they run reports for this kind of stuff, they always do it for the past ninety days um, because that'll give them an accurate amount of data. So don't worry about that. Um, they understand that you know these leads aren't going to close tomorrow, but that's already what they're used to in the nature of their business. So. If you're working with a broker, um, I'd say the minimum you can go on a broker is 1500 but I highly, highly recommend you guys um, stick to 2000 for a broker because there's no reason for a broker not to pay two grand if you're getting them about 80, uh, 40 to 80 leads a month. Because uh, think about it this way, for those leads, they're spending anywhere from 20 to $30 getting them from Zillow or all their other lead sources. So once they sit down and break it down, if the leads that they're getting from us are similar quality, which they're, they're pretty good, um, then it, it totally justifies paying you what they're going to pay you in their mind. So just keep that in mind. Don't be afraid to charge your clients uh, what you're worth because our service is worth a lot. And as you guys saw on the webinar, uh, there's plenty of people doing it out there already. So um, just wanted to plug that in there. Uh, Go out there and get some results with this and let me know what you guys think of this lesson in the group. So in this video, we're going to talk about closing clients if you suck at sales and in a very non-salesy way. So in the last video we talked about, I briefly went over you know, what to charge, how to lead the client through the first conversation. And at the end, I mentioned uh, talking about you know, running a trial for the client. So why should you run a trial? Um, I usually do about a week trial for new clients um, if necessary, which at first it will be necessary until you built up credibility and referrals and stuff like that. But by offering to run a one week trial, uh, you know, you're showing them that confidence is, yet yeah, you're confident in your abilities. It's very rare for a marketing company to do this um, you know, most companies, they even want like a, a three or six month contract or something to work with them. So, uh, you know, they have nothing to lose. They'll likely take you up on this. There's no risk to them other than, you know, the $10 a day that you're going to be spending on on the trial. So usually I, I just say, hey, um, you know, we're only spending $100 a day, $100 uh total at most for the trial usually it's about 70 but I just say 100 because it's it's an easy simple round number um, and if you give them a trial they'll feel likely uh, they'll feel inclined to reciprocate even if they don't end up working with you you can always ask them for referrals or a video testimonial and use that to propel you into um, you know getting other clients so the keys to a successful trial make sure uh, the client pays for the ads always so a lot of people they're like well you know it's my first first trial I want to make sure that they sign on I don't want to ruin this so I'm gonna pay for the ads let me tell you why this doesn't work when you get the when you pay for the ads yourself I found that a lot of the times the client doesn't even follow up with the with the leads um, they have no buy-in, they have no uh, skin in the game, so it's not something that's high on their priority list because you know they're not risking any money. But as soon as they pay for their own ads, and it's it's totally different. Then they then they follow up with the leads, um, they they check on the campaign, all this stuff. So you want to make sure that they always pay for the ads, and uh, you want to make sure that you get the ad up and running as soon as possible. I re highly recommend the buyer lead ad for the trial because it will get you um, the fastest and cheapest results to show your client. So call the client. This is something I do and it works well. Is uh, call the client every day or every other day at at the latest uh, just to see how the leads are going. Just say, hey man, uh, just want to make sure you're following up with the leads. Um, just want to see how it's going with them. Are you liking the quality? All this different stuff because in the back of their mind, they're worried that you're just going to get your paycheck and run. So you want to make sure that you kind of ease them of that thought 
and show them that you care that you know the leads are converting and and if you're following up with them like let's say you call on day one and they haven't followed up they're going to make sure that they follow up on on the second day especially if they know that you're going to be calling them again so during the trial um you want to build as much rapport with the client as possible to the point where they already feel like you're a part of their team super important um the way i do it is like I mean, I make jokes with my clients. I'm I'm stern with them, but I'm funny with them. Um, I'm I'm not all professional at all. That's just kind of my style, and uh, they seem to appreciate it. And I'm I'm really straightforward with them. And the phone calls again, calling them every day. It shows you. It shows them that you you kind of are a part of their team, and they they get more of that feeling as you're a part of their business than if then uh you know just the marketing guy that that they're paying to do this so if you built a strong enough relationship with your client you should have no doubts that they're going to pay you on the seventh day of the trial so usually like throughout the day i'll text my client i'll say hey uh, we just got uh, four leads exclamation send a bunch of exclamation points like be excited about them um just let them know that like you know exciting things are happening and, and the campaign's going great and stuff like that um, you want to be excited and then they'll be excited and they'll you know take care of the leads so usually on about day five I say something like hey uh, your trial is coming to an end in about two days so I'm going to give you a call then at that point to get everything squared away so at this point there should be no doubts that they're going to continue um, you know you've been excited with all the leads uh, they've been telling you the leads have been going great they've been calling them you should know that they're going to especially if you know um, if you if you qualify them and everything correctly, you should know that they're going to pay. And then on day seven, simply call them. Uh, simply do a setup call and call them and just say, hey, uh, you know, just giving you a call to collect payment and, and keep my service going. Um, usually they'll have a, a one or two questions and they'll just give up that credit card number. So you can do it that way. I highly recommend trying to get the, the card number over the phone. Um, because uh, if you send them like a form or something to fill out or an invoice, they're going to kind of take their time with it. But if you call them over the phone and you say, hey, um, I'm, I'm ready. I can run your card through my system right now. Uh, they're more inclined to give it to you right then and there and not, you know, take their time paying the invoice. So um, just kind of how I do it. You don't have to do it that way. Um, but I found that if I send them a form or an invoice, they'll kind of take their time with it. So I just say, hey. Um, I can run your card right now and, and you'll get a, a, a receipt in your um, email account. So that's pretty much it for closing clients. There's, as you can see, there's very little sales or convincing or anything like that involved. It's all just uh, relationship building. Okay, so this is a huge topic of discussion around this business. So I'm just kind of going to show you guys what I do. And then you can go ahead and decide for yourselves on whether or not to do a contract or how you should go about it. So first, it's important to remember no one is ever excited to sign a contract. I mean, think of the last time that you were asked to sign a contract, whether it's for a cell phone or a gym membership or a phone and Internet service. It's always kind of a drag. There's never really um, any, you know, no one's ever happy to do it is basically what I'm trying to get at. So here's what I do. I simply tell the client that I'm not going to ask them to sign a long-term contract. However, I will ask that they sign a 30-day service agreement. This means they can cancel at any time provided that they notify you 30 days in advance. So at any point, they're on the hook. At the, like When they sign on, they're on the hook for two months because they have to give a 30-day notice. So if they sign on... Um, on the first the next day that they're gonna get billed is the first of next month so let's say on the 18th they they want to cancel um, they're still on the hook for that payment on the first so I think that's that's a really fair way of going about it and usually they understand um, that you know you're running a business you have to protect yourself at the end of the day um, you know we have we all have families we all have expenses we want to know we want to have a predictable income so this is how I phrase it to the client Tom I don't usually do any kind of long-term agreements because I feel that as long as I'm making you money you'll be happy to stick with me 
However, I do ask that if you want to cancel that you give me a 30 day notice. So it's not a hard sell. It's not asking them to do this crazy commitment or anything like that right off the bat. It's usually pretty easy to get them to agree to this. Then I simply offer an incentive after the first month. So the reason I do this is because at this point, um, you've, you've gotten them leads, you've gotten them results. Um, they see the value. Hopefully you've been building a good report throughout the month um, and they trust you a little bit more. So this is how I phrase it. Hey Tom, uh, I have a pretty cool program I run. I thought I'd just throw this out there and um, I think it can save you some money. If you're willing to commit to a three month agreement or I, I try to use the word agreement over contract, but um, for being formal here, if we're doing, uh, try to try to commit, uh, if you're willing to commit to a three month contract, I can take 10% off of your monthly fee. So this eases the client into a commitment instead of forcing it on them. It's a lot, lot easier to get someone to agree to this than to just come out of the gate and try to get them locked into a contract. So if you think you've built an, a good enough rapport, you can even try going for six months and that's been successful. Um, but the main point is you, you just got to do what's appropriate for that client and that relationship with that client. So I, I've had success with this. I know other people who have gotten success with this and they've even used this to get clients to prepay um, a couple months in advance, which is even better than having them on an agreement. But at the end of the day, you want to have predictable income. You don't just want to, you know, someone to cancel two days before you think you're about getting ready to bill them. So this is a little bit of, of how um, I protect myself in the next video. I'm going to show you guys how to get a contract made for free or a service agreement made for free. And um, if you have any questions about this concept, just post about it in the group and I'll be happy to help as always. Okay, so this is a huge topic of discussion around this business. So I'm just kind of going to show you guys what I do and then you can go ahead and decide for yourselves on whether or not to do a contract or how you should go about it. So. First, it's important to remember, no one is ever excited to sign a contract. I mean, think of the last time that you were asked to sign a contract, whether it's for a cell phone or a gym membership or a phone and internet service. It's always kind of a drag. There's never really um, any, you know, no one's ever happy to do it is basically what I'm trying to get at. So here's what I do. I simply tell the client that I'm not going to ask them to sign a long-term contract. However... I will ask that they sign a 30-day service agreement. This means they can cancel at any time provided that they notify you 30 days in advance. So at any point, they're on the hook. At the, like When they sign on, they're on the hook for two months because they have to give a 30-day notice. So if they sign on um, on the 1st, the next day that they're going to get billed is the 1st of next month. So let's say on the 18th, they, they want to cancel. Um, they're still on the hook for that payment on the first. So I think that's that's a really fair way of going about it. And usually they understand um, that, you know, you're running a business, you have to protect yourself. At the end of the day, um, you know, we have we all have families, we all have expenses. We want to know, we want to have a predictable income. So this is how I phrase it to the client. Tom, I don't usually do any kind of long-term agreements because I feel that as long as I'm making you money, you'll be happy to stick with me. However, I do ask that if you want to cancel that you give me a 30-day notice. So it's not a hard sell. It's not asking them to do this crazy commitment or anything like that right off the bat. It's usually pretty easy to get them to agree to this. Then I simply offer an incentive after the first month. So the reason I do this is because at this point, um, you've, you've gotten them leads, you've gotten them results, um, they see the value, hopefully you've been building a good report throughout the month, um, and they trust you a little bit more. So this is how I phrase it. Hey Tom, uh, I have a pretty cool program I run, I thought I'd just throw this out there, and um, I think it can save you some money. If you're willing to commit to a three month agreement, or I... I try to use the word agreement over contract, but um, for being formal here, if we're doing, uh, try to try to commit, uh, if you're willing to commit to a three month contract, I can take 10% off of your monthly fee. So 
This eases the client into a commitment instead of forcing it on them. It's a lot, lot easier to get someone to agree to this than to just come out of the gate and try to get them locked into a contract. So if you think you've built an, a good enough rapport, you can even try going for six months and that's been successful. Um, but the main point is you, you just got to do what's appropriate for that client and that relationship with that client. So I, I've had success with this. I know other people who have gotten success with this and they've even used this to get clients to prepay um, a couple months in advance, which is even better than having them on an agreement. But at the end of the day, you want to have predictable income. You don't just want to, you know, someone to cancel two days before you think you're about getting ready to bill them. So this is a little bit of, of how um, I protect myself in the next video. I'm going to show you guys how to get a contract made for free or a service agreement made for free. And um, if you have any questions about this concept, just post about it in the group and I'll be happy to help as always. All right, guys. So now I'm going to show you guys how I get a contract or a service agreement made absolutely for free. Um, I kind of found this uh, a while back. It's actually a funny story. I was maybe 18 or 19 years old. And I wanted a, to get a contract because, um, I mean, I've always been involved in trying all kinds of crazy businesses. So I wanted, you know, my business to look professional, but I couldn't afford a lawyer, of course. So I just went poking around the Internet. I talked to a few people and um, I found out about this website. So here's how it works. You start here. You want to type in a service agreement. There's all these different ones. Um, I just go with general. And I mean, I'll let you guys know, I mean, this isn't a super formal or official service agreement, but it gets me by, um, by no means a lawyer advising you on any, any legal aspects, just showing you what I do, um, and what, what my preference is and a low cost way, a low cost solution to this problem. So we're going to start here. Um, I do uh, work is ongoing, save and continue. Um, I create it in the state that I live in so Pennsylvania and uh, what is a contractor being hired to do Facebook ad services and then type in my name 123 Main Street Philadelphia Pennsylvania 10115 um, so at this point you want to go keep just keep going through and following the uh, directions so client name I'm do uh, Bob Smith corporate or individual I usually just put in their their uh, business name so 321 Main Street Let's say they're also in Philadelphia And now we're going to go down and just keep going through all these steps. So <clears throat> here is where you put in the agreement amount. Uh, no sales tax on services. Save and continue. Uh, before any work starts, will there be a client deposit? Usually, um, well not usually, always, my clients pay $1,500 up front and then $1,500 a month. So when will the, the contractor be paid every month and you just want to go through um, all this stuff so you can kind of customize it for your preferences and whatever you want um, you can even add like a late fee trigger so let's say you want to give uh, you know three days and after that there's a five percent late fee you can either party and the contract early so um, I say yes and 30 days written notice must be given so will the client reimburse reasonable work-related expense there really is none so I just put no um, continue who will own any intellectual property created under this contract for this particular question, I just put me, contractor, because I mean, I'm making all this stuff. 
in uh, you know my click funnels and and I'm building out the ad and all this good stuff <clears throat> so will the contractor have a duty to not reveal confidential client information I just leave that at yes I mean if, if they look over this they're gonna you know feel feel good that you're, you're gonna keep their their business private do you want to include any addition, additional information? I put no. <clears throat> when will this contract be signed? You can leave it on unsure, but if you have a specific date, use that. Do you need any, do you need witnesses to the signing of the contract? I put no. And there you go. So now your, your agreement, and you have this super official, um, you know looking agreement that looks like it was drafted off up by a lawyer but it was actually made by this uh, law depot website so you're gonna have to get um, the I think there's this one right here the uh, free trial it's free for a week um, after that it's thirty three dollars a month but um, you know if you don't want to keep it just make sure that you you cancel in the meantime um, I, I personally highly recommend this website I've never had an issue with it and I've used it for more things other than um, you know these these service agreements, they they actually have a lot of different stuff on here. So um, this is just my simple solution. Again, guys, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not advise, advising you what to do. I'm simply showing you what I do and a simple solution that I found to this this problem. All right, guys. So now I'm going to show you guys how I get a contract or a service agreement made absolutely for free. Um, I kind of found this. Uh, a while back it's actually a funny story I was maybe 18 or 19 years old and I wanted a, to get a contract because um, I mean I've always been involved in trying all kinds of crazy businesses so I wanted you know my business to look professional but I couldn't afford a lawyer of course so I just went poking around the internet I talked to a few people and um, I found out about this website so here's how it works you start here you want to type in a uh, service agreement there's all these different ones um, I just go with general and I mean I'll let you guys know I mean this isn't a super formal or official service agreement but it gets me by um, by no means a lawyer advising you on any any legal aspects just showing you what I do um, and what what my preference is and a low-cost way a low-cost solution to this problem so we're gonna start here um, I do a work is ongoing save and continue um, I create it in the state that I live in so Pennsylvania and uh, what is a contractor being hired to do Facebook ad services and then type in my name one two three Main Street Philadelphia Pennsylvania one zero one one five um so at this point you want to go keep just keep going through and following the uh directions so client name and do uh, bob smith corporate or individual i usually just put in their their uh, business name so 321 main street Say they're also in Philadelphia. And now we're going to go down and just keep going through all these steps. So <clears throat> here is where you put in the agreement amount. Uh, no sales tax on services. Save and continue. Uh, before any work starts, will there be a client deposit? Usually, um, well, not usually, always. My clients pay fifteen hundred up front and then fifteen hundred a month. So, when will the the contractor be paid every month? And you just want to go through um, all this stuff. So, you can kind of customize it for your preferences and whatever you want. Um, you can even add like a late fee trigger. So let's say you want to give. Uh, you know three days and after that there's a five percent late fee can either co party end the contract early 
So um, I say yes and 30 days written notice must be given. So will the client reimburse reasonable work-related expense? There really is none, so I just put no. Um, continue. Who will own any intellectual property created under this contract? For this particular question, I just put me, contractor, because I mean I'm making all this stuff in uh, you know my click funnels and, and I'm building out the ad and all this good stuff. <clears throat> so will the contractor have a duty to not reveal confidential client information? I just leave that at yes. I mean, if if they look over this, they're gonna, you know, feel feel good that you're you're gonna keep their their business private. Do you want to include any addition additional information? I put no. <clears throat> when will this contract be signed? You can leave it on unsure, but if you have a specific date, use that. Do you need any? Do you need witnesses to the signing of the contract? I put no. And there you go. So now your your agreement, and you have this super official, um, you know, looking agreement that looks like it was drafted off, up by a lawyer, but it was actually made by this uh, Law Depot website. So you're gonna have to get um, the. I think there's this one right here. The uh, free trial, it's free for a week. Um, after that, it's $33 a month. But, um, you know, if you don't want to keep it, just make sure that you, you cancel in the meantime. Um, I, I personally highly recommend this website. I've never had an issue with it. And I've used it for more things other than, um, you know, these, these service agreements. They, they actually have a lot of different stuff on here. So um, this is just my simple solution. Again, guys, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not advising you what to do. I'm simply showing you what I do and a simple solution that I found to this, this problem. All right, guys. So now I'm going to show you guys how I get a contract or a service agreement made absolutely for free. Um, I kind of found this uh, a while back. It's actually a funny story. I was maybe 18 or 19 years old, and I wanted a, to get a contract because I'm um, I mean, I've always been involved in trying all kinds of crazy businesses. So I wanted, you know, my business to look professional, but I couldn't afford a lawyer, of course. So I just went poking around the Internet. I talked to a few people and um, I found out about this website. So here's how it works. You start here. You want to type in a service agreement. There's all these different ones. Um, I just go with general. And I mean. I'll let you guys know, I mean, this isn't a super formal or official service agreement, but it gets me by, um, by no means a lawyer advising you on any, any legal aspects, just showing you what I do, um, and what, what my preference is and a low cost way, a low cost solution to this problem. So we're going to start here. Um, I do a work is ongoing, save and continue. Um, I create it in the state that I live in. So Pennsylvania, and uh, what is a contractor being hired to do? Facebook ad services, and then type in my name, 123 Main Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 10115. Um, so at this point, you want to go keep, just keep going through and following the uh, directions so client name do uh, Bob Smith corporate or individual I usually just put in their their uh, business name so 321 Main Street Let's say they're also in Philadelphia And now we're going to go down and just keep going through all these steps. So <clears throat> here is where you put in the agreement amount. Uh, no sales tax on services. Save and continue. Uh, before any work starts, will there be a client deposit? Usually, um, well, not usually, always. My clients pay $1,500 up front and then $1,500 a month. 
So when will the, the contractor be paid? Every month. And you just want to go through um, all this stuff. So you can kind of customize it for your preferences and whatever you want. Um, you can even add like a late fee trigger. So let's say you want to give, uh, you know, three days and after that there's a 5% late fee. Can either party end the contract early? So um, I say yes and 30 days written notice must be given. So will the client reimburse reasonable work-related expense? There really is none, so I just put no. Um, continue. Who will own any intellectual property created under this contract? For this particular question, I just put me, contractor, because I mean I'm making all this stuff in uh, you know my click funnels and and I'm building out the ad and all this good stuff. <clears throat> so will the contractor have a duty to not reveal confidential client information? I just leave that at yes. I mean, if if they look over this, they're going to, you know, feel feel good that you're you're going to keep their their business private. Do you want to include any addition, additional information? I put no. <clears throat> when will this contract be signed? You can leave it on unsure, but if you have a specific date, use that. Do you need any, do you need witnesses to the signing of the contract? I put no. And there you go. So now your, your agreement, and you have this super official, um, you know, looking agreement that looks like it was drafted off, up by a lawyer, but it was actually made by this uh, Law Depot website. So you're gonna have to get um, the, I think there's this one right here, the uh, free trial, it's free for a week. Um, after that, it's $33 a month. But um, you know, if you don't wanna keep it, just make sure that you, you cancel in the meantime. Um, I, I personally highly recommend this website. I've never had an issue with it. And I've used it for more things other than um, you know these, these service agreements. They, they actually have a lot of different stuff on here. So um, this is just my simple solution. Again, guys, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not advise, advising you what to do. I'm simply showing you what I do and a simple solution that I found to this this problem. All right, so let's talk about keeping, uh, retaining your clients. Uh, this is one of the most important parts of this business because if you can't retain your clients, you're basically at zero every month and your life is just a lot easier when you know how to keep your clients. And it really comes down to one thing. Retention is all about getting your clients results, in other words, money and making them money. But a lot of the time, they suck at tracking results, so they forget how awesome you are. Mostly agents, usually uh, my brokers are, are pretty good at keeping track of uh, how many leads we're getting them, how many are converting, all this good stuff. So this is where you come in and constantly remind them how awesome you and your marketing is. So, th so how do you do this? Um, the way I do it is I send them a weekly and monthly report email just showing them uh, the, the results that we're getting. So here's what I include in that email and then I'm gonna show you an example. So I include how many leads we got. I include uh, the impressions, meaning how many times the ad was shown. Clicks to post and the amount spent. I only do clicks to post if it's a PPE ad, a post engagement ad. So here's an example. This is an actual email that I sent uh, to one of my clients. Uh, I said 101 leads in the past 30 days, more than double the usual. So I'm, uh, this is actually true. We were doing around 40 to 45 a month for a few months. And then this month, um, the pixel season, I guess it was a good time of the year. Uh, and we picked up 101 leads. So I made sure that I kept track of that because these guys, they don't, they know they're getting leads all over the place, but they don't remember um, exactly how many they're getting unless they run the reports. So I said post engagement 3,304. Um, I just included that as like a little, uh, a little side note um, because it, it's a decent number. 
I said impressions 49,455 so the reason I do that is because realtors care about branding so if they know that their their ad has been shown to you know 49,000 people um, they in their mind they're they're getting branding and all this and all this other stuff that that helps uh, build their business so clicks on the post 3,851 and then I said amount spent three hundred and fourteen dollars and I made sure I put a crap ton of exclamation points to show them how freaking awesome that is and then I made a little joke at the end must be something in the water um, I just I just just kind of how I am with my clients I joke with them um, I, I kind of I, I'm good at building a rapport and you should be too because um, it all goes back to making them feel like you're a part of their team and they like having you around so um, this is really it you want to send a report like this weekly just as a reminder hey look we got this many leads um, it also makes sure that they're staying on top of it and then at the end of the month I, I do it like when it's getting ready to um, come to the point where they're gonna keep me again um, for the next two months because you know we're doing you know 30 days um, I send out the, the email and when you send out an email like this with with so much excitement behind it um, usually it translate to them translates to them so the, the response I got from this email was like oh great job that's awesome um, yeah things are picking up around here like it was a very personable exchange so then after this I pretty much um, you know collect my pay for the next month and um, I send them that email weekly other than that we really don't communicate too much there's not too much to say which is why I love my real estate clients because there's not too much to talk about um, when things are going well as long as they're getting leads and getting low-cost leads uh, I mean uh, this is this one was ridiculous we got three dollar and fourteen cent leads or something uh, for buyer leads um, with those kind of results there's really not much else to talk about um, unless we're just conversing about you know random stuff that goes on in our day on Facebook and crap like that but as far as like this business and running their ads there's really not a whole lot to to discuss with the client outside of, of these key key performance indicators or KPIs so if you're doing this and you're doing this right um, I actually learned this from a buddy of mine and once I started doing it my retention was great my retention was never horrible I've never really had a trouble uh, holding on to clients but once I did this it's like I, I can't even remember the last time um, someone stopped working with me after they started so um, knock on wood hopefully it stays that way but if you guys do this um, I think this will greatly uh, boost the amount of clients that that stay on with you for a long period of time okay so in this video I'm gonna show you guys how I bill my clients and the rec the uh, recommended method for billing your clients every month so we're gonna start up here in account we're gonna go to payment gateways this is assuming that you've already built a stripe account um, this is where you'll integrate it it's it's pretty simple there's clear instructions on how to do it um, so once your stripe account is integrated we're gonna go back to click funnels and let's go to this checkout form so this checkout form will be blank you won't have any products you're gonna click products add new product and just go through this and, and name the product um, do an integration which which will be stripe uh, we're gonna Nate give it an amount uh, don't worry about price display override and then we're gonna click one time um, if you do subscription, there's another step that you have to do in inside of, Scri of Stripe, so I wouldn't worry about that uh, right now. So uh, once this is set up, you basically you're gonna have an order form that looks like this. Now mine is set to subscription because my clients are okay with that, um, <clears throat> but yours won't be at first. So once you have this set up and the person pays once, all you gotta do is um, my Stripe's in test mode right now. But you just got to go to payments. So see, these all these are, are different test payments that I did, just testing out different products and stuff. So if I go to any one of these and just click it and go down, um, there's going to be a section under, sorry, it's actually under um, customers. And I go to any customer on here, 
and then go down and hit create payment and I can do like you know a thousand dollars and once someone pays in their in your stripe um, through your stripe you can bill them at any time for any amount really um, <clears throat> with their I mean of course you want to have their permission and all that as long as their card isn't expired so it shows you what will appear on their statement so let's just say test and you can hit charge customer it makes you put your password in again and authenticate give it a second and bam so then if you look here you can see that that this customer has been charged for this amount and then you can see all their previous charges as well and if there's any declines or anything like that it'll come up on here so hopefully this is a pretty clear explanation I know everybody's always wondering how to charge clients or if you should get them on auto pay um, <clears throat> I wouldn't recommend the auto pay thing at first but this way it's almost the same because a few days before it's time to bill your client again you're just gonna say hey mr. client um, your bill dates uh, on the your bill last month on the fifth your next bill date is on the fifth um, just letting you know you'll you will be billed on that day and you know usually they're they're aware of that especially if you preframe them up front and you let them know okay in 30 days we're gonna bill you again unless you cancel or um, you know if you have a contract even better then you can just go in and do this every month so hopefully that's a clear explanation if you guys have any questions about this just post it in the group and I'll be happy to help alright so in this lesson I'm gonna show you guys how I uh, send lead notifications to my clients so we're gonna start up here in account we're gonna go to integrations I use a third-party software called active campaign um, but I've also used MailChimp and uh, I had a client that already had a Weber so they all work kind of similar um, I just personally use active campaign because it's uh, the most user-friendly I guess you can say so you're gonna go to add integration just give it a nickname this is assuming you haven't integrated yet um, active campaign and then it's gonna ask for the API key and the API URL so you're gonna go back to active campaign um, assuming that you've built your account already and, and set all that stuff up and you're gonna go to my settings then you're gonna go down here to developer and it's gonna give you a URL and it's gonna give you a API key so the URL actually goes down here and the API key goes right in here so once you copy the API key into here you hit create integration um, and your integration is going to be set up right here similar to how it looks for me um, so you're gonna go into click funnels go into any uh, funnel it doesn't really matter and this is just a funnel that I use for some affiliate stuff so you're gonna go to edit page and assuming you've integrated it correctly um, it's gonna look something like this so you're gonna go to integration active campaign add to list and it's going to show you all these different lists these are the lists that you've created inside of active campaign I'll show you how to do that in a sec so once you've done that so let's say I just pick uh, the first one that pops up here Pierce funnel so now it's integrated and anytime a lead comes in through this uh, form this pop-up this uh, lead entry form it's gonna get put onto that list so over here in active campaign we wanna create a list we wanna go to lists very similar to this uh, it works very similar to this in MailChimp so let's say we're gonna call it test list uh, pick any address doesn't really matter test.com give a you have to put a reminder um, opted into lead magnet create list so now our list is created it's right here see uh, test we're gonna click here on this little arrow we're gonna hit advanced settings and you're gonna type in your clients email right here so I'll just type in mine for now and you're just gonna hit save now anytime a new contact is put on that list 
um, your clients gonna get an email so the way I check my leads you can set it up uh, that you also get an email just by clicking I think it's enter and then putting your email under but I mean if I did that I would be swarmed with emails all day long so I just kind of come in here and periodically check it on the funnel and I'll check it on the I'll check their list and make sure everything's okay um, but that is pretty much it as far as notifying your clients of the leads this does it instantly and um, there's a way to do it through click funnels but I found it's kind of faulty unless I, I don't think that they fixed it because I tried it not too long ago um, it sometimes it doesn't send the leads sometimes it stops sending them sometimes it sends duplicates so I would stick to, to doing it through a third party for now until they fix that so this is by far the simplest way I found they get the notification almost instantly and they can follow up right away um, as provided that you know they're the ones that are that are following up so if you guys have any questions post about it in the group and I'll be happy to help